and welcome to Chaos Live. We are back at Chaos Strength Gym in Preston for England's Strongest Man Under 90 Kilograms 2024. My name is Danny Curtis, aka Britain's Strongest Drummer, the mouth from the south. And I am sat here with the UKNS Under 82 Kilogram World Champion, Becca Worgan. How are you doing? Let's go, I'm excited. Today's gonna to be such a good day. It's gonna be really exciting. All the lads are just warming up on the log, and yeah, it's gonna be a good one. So yeah, there's a there's a real difference in physiques between uh, the under 90s and the under 80s. Uh, these are big lads that are competing today, and they are gonna be lifting some big weights. Let's run through the events that these guys are gonna be tackling today. Similar but different to last week with the under 80s, we are going to start with the overhead log press for reps. As many reps as you're able to do in 60 seconds. Three weight options, 100 kilograms, 100, I beg your pardon, 90 kilograms, 110 kilograms, and 130 kilograms. Second event, we've got the deadlift for reps, as many reps as possible in 60 seconds. Three weight options there, 210 kilograms, 250 kilograms, and two. 190 kilograms then we move outside for the bag toss similar to last week but heavier 16 kilograms going up to 24 kilograms the endurance event for the under 90s is a farmer's carry for max distance back and forth as many lengths as you can manage in a 75 second time limit and to finish off the competition sandbag over a bar as many reps as possible within the time limit. Again, three weight options for this. 100 kilograms, 120 kilograms, and 140 kilograms. How do you fancy those events? It's, it's very back heavy, isn't it? <laughs> These lads are gonna have sore backs today after this, I think. Yeah, yeah. Go, going from the farmers into the sandbag for reps. Oh, that is gonna sting, that. There's gonna be some pooly CNSs by the end of today. <laughs> and we may possibly see an Axel overhead British record attempted. Josh Lancaster is, he's announced he's gonna give it a go, but I have heard that he's gonna see how the log goes. Yeah. Um, he likes doing this, he likes just adding in these extra record attempts during competitions. Last time was back in 2022 at England's Strongest Man under 80 kilograms where he went for a max dumbbell press record and he yeah. eventually got it. There were, it took a couple of attempts, but he got it. Uh, this time, max axle overhead. It's gonna be a British record, British under 90 kilogram record, currently held by Dan Ashcroft. But yeah. we need to get the log press out of the way first. first yeah, I think he was so we're going to see how the log goes and depending on how that goes we'll then decide whether he goes for that axle record but I know he's been saying in training everything's been feeling really really good like he's got his axle clicking really really well everything seems to be working and I know he's hit very near or above the record already a couple of times so he knows it, it, it can be there if he wants it but we had a discussion this morning about how a log especially is very different on comp day and I feel like a lot of people don't take that into account. It can, you can be training it absolutely fine, be hitting the numbers that you expect and then the change in scenario on the day can completely throw you off. So I think he wants to see how that goes before he commits to saying that he's going to do anything. But I think it's a really sensible way to do it. But as we know, Josh is a bit of a special character, isn't he? The yep. last, last comp he did was the Arnolds and he decided to do two categories. So. <laughs> Yeah, he won the under 90 kilogram class, and was yeah. it the 105s? Yeah, I think he, came he took second. second. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So he, he loves a hard day's work. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Doesn't make it easy on himself. Uh, but yeah, we have Dan Benson returning to competition after suffering a bicep injury, which put him out of action for the official strongman games last year, which. He was gutting the 90 kilograms and you'll be able to find the results there and then they will be updated live and we will have a scoreboard to display for you after each event as well. So you will be able to keep up with your favorite athletes and how they're doing. Uh, do join in with the chat. We will dip in as and when Take we are able to. Own. Keep it friendly. <laughs> or if you don't, I'll bully you back. <laughs> Because we're all here to watch a fun competition, watch some guys doing some amazing things. <laughs> and have some fun. 
So it looks like we've only got four athletes out of the 25 that we've got here today that are going to do the lightest log, the 90 kilogram log. I say the lightest log, 90 kilograms. I mean, it's, it's basically body weight for, the, for these guys. It's not uh, particularly light log, is it's it? It's not particularly <laughs> light, no. How confident are you on a, on a log press? Well, I, I was very, very confident on log press. I did, we had, um, was it 90 kilos for the, yeah it was, for Europe last year, our log was 90 kilos for the OSG Europe. Um, and I trained it and I'd hit it twice, oh, well I'd hit it a few times, I'd hit a double in training and I thought, yeah, nice one, but like I said before, I went out onto the competition floor, the lights were so high because we were in that XL centre and it just completely threw me off. I cracked the log on my head in the first rep and was like, well, and I must have cleaned it. I think I cleaned it five times. You get nowhere near it, nowhere bloody near. So, yeah, I think log for me is one of those where I can be really confident in draining and it genuinely feels just how it feels on comp day. That's going to decide how it is. It's doesn't really matter how much training I put into it or not really. <laughs> yeah, uh, the overhead, especially the log, on a competition day, you have to you have to grapple with the nerves, the adrenaline, the crowd. And because it's always first event as well, and I feel like this is why I, do, I love a comp that does a deadlift as your first event, because you can use all that raw energy, that those raw nerves, and get it out, because once the first event's over, you don't have to calm down, do you? You're like, oh, Absolutely. nice one, chill out. So, doing log as your first event is super, super hard for people. It's so hit and miss, isn't it? Yep, yeah, certainly that's the way I find log press at these sorts of competitions. I, uh, at the UKNS UK finals in Galway last year, I had a terrible time. It was a 100 kilogram log. I've done it once in training, yeah. but on the day, again, cleaned it about three or four times. Whether it was the nerves, whether I was rushing, who knows? It's yeah. just, and and that's it could have just been an unfamiliar log because that's the thing as well. You don't really get logs. There's no universal. It's not really a spec that anyone yeah. follows, is there, with logs? So it's it's very tricky and as well. There seemed to be a bit of a thing last year of wooden logs, and now I hate a wooden log. <laughs> I hate it, but only because. The chance of that log being unbalanced is so high. Yeah. <laughs> like, if you get a metal log, you know it's going to be the same way on both sides. If it's a wooden, there's a chance it's going to be at least one or two or three kilos wrong on one side, and that doesn't have change it as well. Like, yep. that makes it really tricky. But a good tip that I learned from Bex Kumpsty actually, log Don. Um, was that when she was training, I think for a world record as well, she'd unbalance the log a lot of the time, so she'd put a fractional plate on one side so that it was slightly imbalanced, so you got used to that, like, oh, hang on, this is a little bit off, I can self-correct this, and I thought that was a really useful tip, and I used that training for Europe last year. I mean, it didn't pay off for me, but <laughs> a useful training tip for you there if you wanted it. <laughs> that is a very useful tip. So last week we saw some very strict refereeing. Very. We can expect exactly the same this week. We've got Rhiannon Lovelace is going to be refereeing one of the lanes and you know she will not be giving away any reps. This is a national level competition. So the standard will be incredibly high for these athletes. No, no free reps to there. And standing there with, with this sort of weight, 90 kilograms, 110, 130 kilograms overhead, every millisecond feels like a minute. Oh God, it's, it's a hard to, that 130 log is heavy, isn't it? And like again, I mean, there's a good chunk of people who've decided to go for that 130 so far. And it's probably not as many as last week, I feel like. I feel like a lot of lads picked the 120 last week on a bit of a like, hope for the best yeah and I imagine the lads today saw that last week and have maybe made slightly different choices because of what happened last week because like we said last week as well if you miss that log now in this first event there's 
26, 27 competitors today. You start off at zero, those lads in the top have already got 26, 27 points. And you are at such a disadvantage from the set, like from the get-go, aren't you? Well, yeah, that's it. If you zero the 130 kilogram log and someone gets one rep on the 90 kilogram log, out, that you? athlete <laughs> is, is leapfrogged you. So first up, we've got Nathaniel Banks going out on his own. Now he is usually in the under 80 kilogram class. So stepping up to the under 90s this year. Good solid green. Slow to lock out, but steady. Solid. So we'll see this a lot. We'll see athletes will have an idea of how many reps they're likely to get on these logs and they'll adjust their game plan to it. So Nathaniel, I believe he probably feels like he's got a couple of reps in him. So there's no sense sprinting right out of the gate. So he's stepping back, making the most of his time. We've got another packed out crowd today, so it's gonna get nice and loud for these athletes. Oh, oh. Little hesitant on the drive, it's Ming there, so close, he's taking the ball. Just a little bit unstable there, it looked uh, like... That left arm just was not having any of it, was it? You could see there that his right was sending it, but his left just was not having it. That was a fight right to the end. Real fight. Coming up now we've got Wayne Fulton and Jack Buchanan, both on the 90 kilogram log. And we're off. Solid cleans from both of these athletes. Jack, very strong right out of the gate. Wayne not far behind. But Wayne first to go back in. That log flew from Wayne. Good start from both these guys. Wayne seems very strong on the actual press. Being nice and deliberate with the clean. Jack Buchanan seems to be tiring just a little bit. See if Wayne gives it another good solid press. So yeah, it definitely seems like for Wayne, the clean is the more challenging part. Yeah. Because that press Because the press is, looks easy. It, yeah. But with the press that easy, it looks like you could have done 110, but I'm wondering whether if it's close to his max, he's decided to play it a bit safe today. And as well, like we said before, this is a very back-heavy comp. Like, you don't want to fry your CNS on log cleans in the first event, do you? Absolutely. Absolutely. So we've got David Evans and Luke Shirley coming up. Luke Shirley is going to be the first athlete on the 110 kilogram log. Now Luke Shirley I've seen and been in competitions with for, for years now. He's a great athlete to watch. Always has a smile on his face. Always gives it everything in every single event. He's one of those athletes that... What's he got on his shorts? Dragon Ball Z or something? Yeah, I think, I think it's uh, Dragon Ball Z shorts. It's an anime boy. Or is it Naruto? I don't know, ah, someone, someone in the chat might know. <laughs> Tell us in the chat if you know your cartoons. Oh shit, I shouldn't say that, I mean anime. <laughs> Alright, good oh, from David. Yes, and a good Good from Luke, that was a slow lockout but he got it. Oh, he's going straight in, interesting choice. Oh, maybe that's just the way he Good from both of these guys. David just knocking reps out over there, no bother. Third rep for Luke. Hovering! Get it? Oh, and he yes. gets it! Watching that first rep, I did not think there was going to be another two coming out of there, did you? I think he's probably got one more in him. He's, he's got that grip. If he pauses during the, during the press, he will grind it out. He's still got time. Oh, Is he going to get it? He's, he's going, going backwards. Back he's nearly locked it out. Stable oh, yes. gets the down signal. Excellent from Luke Shirley. He's happy with that. That 
was a great show from both of them. Athletes, wonderful, uh, wonderful. So we've got Rob Nixon and Mark Cummins up next. Mark Cummins, the honey badger. Oh, he's so cute. Look how he Oh, we've got the Battle of the Jorts. Dun, dun, not the Jorts. Rob Nixon, surveyor of strength. He told us he likes long walks on the beach, burritos, mojitos, and he thinks split jerks are cheating. Oh, I was going to be nice there and sing the Pina Colada song for him, but I'm not going to do that now he said that about split jerks. That's a good point. I don't know how many split jerks we'll see in this weight class. It definitely seems like a technique you see more in the under 80s, but 110 kilograms for both wow. of these guys. Mark Cummins with the split jerk. Nice, easy Rob split Rob Nixon jerk from won't Mark. appreciate that. Ooh, now it's a battle though. Who's going to prevail? Push or split? Okay, yes, they are tied on reps right now. Almost working in synchronization, aren't they? Matching each other rep for rep. Rob Nixon just out in front. Wow. That's, that's one of the things with the split jerk. If you're confident with it, there is there's no press really. You just drop the thing, yeah. underneath the log, catch it, stand up, oh. and there you go. Mark oh. Cummins pulling out in front. Oh, Mark just Rob Nixon possibly getting a bit lightheaded there. 15 seconds to go. Has Mark got another rep? Has Rob got another rep? It's nearly there. Oh, they're tied now, but what's He gets that? the down oh, single yes, from Rhiannon, for Mark. as does Mark. And Mark's calling Mark. it. Oh, wow. Well, turns out split jerk prevails, eh? <laughs> Rob, eat your words. Okay, next up we've got Michael Sillis and Sam Watson. Michael Sillis, this is his first time competing at a national level. Wow, big comp to be coming in at for the first time, isn't it? Big competition, another Ooh, solid split jerk. Oh, Sam just struggling with that push press there. Ooh, another very nice split jerk. Good from Sillis. Right, Sam Watson is going to have to dig deep for this. Wow. Spending a long time in that front rack position. Every second you spend in that front rack. Yeah, it takes it out of you. Absolutely. Oh, Michael with the middle of his it. Strong, little unstable. These lads are getting tired now. Sam Watson needs this though. Michael just flying through these reps. He's got some legs on him, that boy, hasn't he? Not bad for your first time. First event at a national level competition. Yeah, great start. Great start for Michael there. Shame for Sam. All right, we've got Steven Stevenson. Steven Stevenson, Steven what Stevenson. a name. Jake <laughs> Allen, now Steven Stevenson. The double Lost Steve. 30 kilograms over an eight month period to compete in this competition. What? That's tremendous. That he obviously insane. decided he wanted to compete here, committed to it. Oh, uh, tremendous nice start. From, both lads. from Steve Stevenson, both guys. Another solid press from Jake Allen. Such strength coming out of that dip. Drive. Jake doing the most sensible dismount of the log as well so far. Back down to chest. That must be taking it out of him a little bit, but he doesn't seem to be slowing down at all. Jesus. Steven just struggling a little bit on this press now. He's got a rep on the board though, so it's not the end of the world. Jake is just flying through these reps. I feel like this again has probably been a tactical choice for Jake because of the amount of reps he's got here, there doesn't seem to be any reason he couldn't have pressed that 130. That's it, that's it. If you if you can press what five, six reps at 110, you can probably have given the yeah, 130 the a good go. go. All right, Matt Diamond and Perry White. Perry White's been listening to Dragon Ball Z before uh, 
before lifting. You see a lot of the lads with their headphones on, and I do wonder what they're listening to. And we've got one answer. These underneaths really like anime, don't they? <laughs> the theme. Oh, nice claims from both the lads there. See it, reps. Yes. Reps on the board for both athletes. Matt Diamond straight back in. Wow. Excellent effort from Perry White there. Matt Diamond going back in. Matt seems to have found his groove a little bit more now. The first couple of reps were a bit tentative. Perry White nearly got folded in half by that log just then. Perry White taking a couple of logs to the forehead there, but Matt Diamond, is he calling it there? He's, yeah, he's off the field. Next up, Graham Williams and Simon Walsh. We're getting close to the end of our 110 kilogram log athletes. I think in the next heat we will see our first 130 kilogram log lifter. There is some interesting short choices here today, isn't there? Oh! Whoa. Quick out the gate for Simon Walsh, didn't get the down signal, you need to pause it overhead. The referees need to be satisfied that you have locked it out, you are stable with it. Graham, just like Graham Williams did just then. Held it yes. overhead. This yes. was specified in the rules this morning that you had to hold that lockout. And like they said, if you if you are locked out, you can hold that overhead. Like there's no reason you can't hold it for a second to get that down command. So they said they were going to be strict, and they are being strict. Graham Williams momentarily balancing that log on his face. Whoa. Simon Walsh seems to be done. But 15 seconds to pull something out of the bag. Graham Williams. Going for it again. Oh. Spent ages in that front rack, pushed the log forwards, unable to lock it out. But both of these guys gave it everything. So coming up, Connor Smith is our final 110 kilogram log presser. And our first 130 kilogram lifter on the log, we have Josh Lancaster. So this. This is going to be our indicator as to whether or not he's going to attempt the actual, uh, the, the actual overhead press British record. Now I looked at it, Josh Lancaster competed at the Chaos Classic last year. That had a max log. Josh Lancaster reached the 130 log. That was his max that day. Yeah. So how many reps has he gotten in today? His we pressing will see. has progressed very, very fast over the last sort of few months though hasn't he? He's obviously found like a little groove and got his little technique set up and Josh Lancaster has some big numbers off. He's another split jerker. And when he dips for that split he goes deep. So Connor Smith right out the gate. Confident press from Connor. Nearly dropped it. There's one rep from Josh. His belt, belt come off, which might have thrown him a little bit, but he usually is pretty good with that sort of stuff. Yeah, he's an adaptable athlete. But Connor meanwhile, Smith is smashing these reps out here. Yeah, over there, Connor though, Smith he? just working away. That push press that he's doing is almost as fast as Josh's split jerk. He has got that nailed. Josh I, will be already happy with this result, I think. I feel like Josh is wearing the belt just to help with the clean. That belt is so loose. Yeah. I don't think he's getting anything out of it brace-wise. So we've got wow. three for Josh. I guess this is probably British records attempt rep range, but yeah. Connor Smith plugging oh, away. Uh, he is oh, happy with that performance. Oh, Josh. Josh just missing out on the fourth rep, but Crucially, the fourth rep was there. Yes, he definitely. could have locked it out. So, are we going to see 
a Max Axel I'd be surprised if we don't attempt. I was speaking to Josh this morning he was talking about two three reps would be great so I think that's probably gone as well as it possibly could have today for him so hopefully I want to see an Axel record do you want to see an Axel record send it to us in the chat and if you do I'll go and tell Josh how many people are relying on him to do this record <laughs> put yep. the pressure on him properly he'll he'll bow down to the peer pressure so we've got <laughs> Tom Cox and Frank Parks Tom Cox, the strong medic. Yeah, we are firmly into the 130 kilogram. Oh my god, 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 Jesus Christ. Incredible. That was some battle that late, wasn't it? What on earth? But again, Frank Parks just. Working away in, on the other lane there. His planes are so Pause! Get from Frank Parks on that one! Oh no. Tom Fox, that might, that fight might have taken it out of him. Tom needs to just have a minute. He needs to reset, refocus. Play for his last, oh, 15 seconds now. This is his last chance. Come on, Tom. Get a rep. Oh, too fast. No rep from Frank Parks there. He's going back in for one more, but Tom Cox, I think. Oh. That first rep. Wow. I that mean, if, was a that, that was must have been 10 seconds struggling with that, with 130 kilograms. It felt like 40 over. minutes to him. <laughs> 40 kilograms over body weight. All right, now we've got Rich Molnar returning from England's Strongest Man Under 80s, where he made the podium last week. Now, I know previously Rich has pressed 130, pressed it at Steel City in Middlesbrough, but obviously, like we said before, going for those top-level PBs is a risky game, isn't it? Will Clark taking a hit of the salt. Come on, Will! Come on, Will. By the time that these men are taking, this is probably going to be fairly maximal. Will Clark, nice and clean, but a bit of spent a very Will long Clark. time in the rack there. Will Clark just going to be a light headed there. Rich with his clean. Oh, Rich also walking backwards! Oh. Yeah, this is maximal for both of these men. Will Clark spent a lot of time in that front rack position and when he cleaned the log, the weight of it, the momentum carried him backwards a couple of steps. Yeah. And you can see he was losing a bit of consciousness as well. It's, yeah. it's such a heavy weight to have sat on your chest. Go, 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 go. We want both of these guys to get a rep. I think Will was looking over to us to find out how much time he had. In which final attempt here. Are we gonna see it? No. Alright, no Spat good. Him straight out. Either athlete on that heat, that's not what we wanna see. We wanna see all these athletes get reps. They're but gonna be very upset with that result, I would imagine. I, it's as you say though. It's as you say though, what what is Rich Molnar hoping to get out of today personally? I think he wants a head-to-head -head deadlift battle with Dan Rich. I think that's why he's here. Well, that won't, ha won't happen really, will it? Anyway, we've got Dan Benson now and Jamie Jemmel. Jamie Jemmel, that's a great way to say that name. I don't know whether that's how you pronounce it, but I love it. Easy first rep for Dan Benson there. He is not messing about. With Jamie just struggling on that clean. Dan Benson, European champion. Easy second rep. Back in 2022 at OSG, Dan Benson was in a three-way tie for the World Championship, going into the final event of Stones, and he narrowly lost out. First row of the crowd there. Yep, Dan Benson nearly taking out the referee. I don't think that's something you want to do, but he's got a few reps on the board. Going for his third now, Jamie just going for his first. Come on, Jamie. Oh. No. See, I feel like Dan Benson can afford to go as hard as possible on the log 
because the deadlift is a tremendous event for him. Yeah. He currently holds the world record in the under 90 kilogram class with 401.55 kilograms. Wow. So 290 kilograms for Rex. Should be easy. Should be easy. He got 11 reps at the Chaos Classic with the same weight on an axle bar last year. So on a deadlift bar, should be good. This is our final heat. Ben Sacri. And Ollie Clark. Ollie Clark with an easy clean straight off the bat and easy press. This is a big press for Ben. This is a PB attempt. But Ben also had a bicep injury just after Christmas. Has not had it reattached. So he is part of the one bicep crew. Come on, Ben, get that clean. Oh. Ollie Clark motoring away. Ollie Clark's coming for that win. This rep will be big Dan. Yes, he's done it. That's all he needs to do. Playing it smart, playing it smart. That is a man who is out for the win, has a game plan. Come on, Ben. Ben Sacri going in once again. Oh, just not got that clean. You can see with Ben that left arm just not being able to pull that clean. And he told me, because he's had that bicep off, he's had to change his log clean quite a bit because once you have those biceps off, you can't rely on them anymore. <laughs> They're not there to help. So. Using the kicks on that long clean is super, super important and it just didn't look like it was there today. It's a bit gutting for him. I know he was good in for it. So that concludes the Log Press for Reps event. Let's see if we can get some scores up. We will get the scores up as soon as we have them or you can check them on Strength Results. Some great performances there, some athletes there will be feeling a bit sore, literally and figuratively after that. But 130 kilograms, it's, it's not a light log. Absolutely not. So next up we have the deadlift for reps. Wow, so we've got the points up here. So in first place we have Holly Clark with four reps at 130. Starting the day off with 25 points, nice place to be. And then we have Josh Lancaster and Frank Parks in joint second place, both with three reps with 23.5 points. Dan Benson sat in fourth place with 22 reps. 22 points, not 22 Tw reps. Oh, not 22 reps, no, Jesus Christ, two reps. <laughs> 22 points. And um, Connor Smith sat in fifth place with 20.5 points. And that was with the six reps on the 110 kilo log. So interesting again, like we were saying last week, obviously these lads who've gone for that 130 and failed it are now sat at the bottom. So there's currently one, two, three, four, five, six lads starting the day with zero points. And that is a hard place to start off your day. That will not be filling them with joy. <laughs> It's hard, but not impossible to come back from. But Definitely not. No. I don't know with it with the caliber with the caliber of athletes that are in this lineup. Yeah, starting off with zero points it is a mountain to climb to be able to claw it back. Uh, I am spying the crew setting up axle bars, which are presumably set up for Josh Lancaster to go yeah, for the must records. Be, must be getting ready to do it now. So let's just fill you in the current under 90 kilogram axle press British record is held by Dan Ashcroft and it is 153.5 kilograms so Josh I think is going to be going for 154.5 oh, I beg your pardon no we're setting up deadlift bars but no, still. no, no, they have got the axle bars up in front of us, we just can't see it very well. It's here. It from, the, here. from the commentary desk, our, our field of vision is sometimes a little bit limited. We've, but got, yeah, we've, we've, got, we've got our got safety barrier. Bar. <laughs> Which, as you, as you can tell from, from that log press event, we, we do need a bit of a safety barrier. We appreciate barrier. it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like to keep the safety barrier. <laughs> Thank you to everyone in the chat. Let's dip in and see what you guys are saying. Sasha, you are correct. 22 reps on 130 <laughs> kilograms would be absolutely insane. Uh, we've got shout outs for the guys that are training out of 
Maverick Strength Gym. We've got quite a few here. Steve Stevenson being one of them. Yeah, dropping 30 kilograms to be able that to compete in the under 90 kilogram insanity. class. Insanity, insanity. Over eight months. I wonder how has um, how has strength changed dropping that amount of weight? Because obviously, not just the dropping weight, but the change in your leverages, it'll be massive. Because I know that I dropped from open weight to under 82, and I only dropped like 10 kilos. It wasn't massive, but the difference in my leverages was noticeable, definitely noticeable. So, interesting to see how that he thinks that'll have affected him. Uh, we've, we've been asked in the chat for our predictions for, for podium. Ooh. Now, uh, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm putting it out there now. It's Ollie Clark, Dan Benson, and I'm going to go for Josh. Come on, Josh. I think he can get that third place. He's off to a great start, and he's confident going into his day. I think he can grab that third place. Yeah, Josh, Josh is... He's historically had troubles with deadlifts due to a glute injury that he suffered for a long, long time. Yeah. But I think he's coming back from it. He has been pulling 300 plus, I think, yeah. in his training. So should should do a, put in a good performance on the deadlift. The other events he loves. Yes. He loves the sandbag great toss. events for Josh. He loves a farmer's, he loves a farmer's carry for distance. And he loves a sandbag. Yeah, yeah, massive. So, yeah, they are very good events for well, him. Well, I know for his England qualifier, he did 170 kilo a hand for 30 second hold, which is insanity. Because I know there was open weight lads that were doing like 160, 170, and Josh is obviously not an open weight, so super impressive. He's got great grip, so. Yeah, so you, you, you could be right. I, I, I would echo it, but I would switch Dan Benson and Ollie Clark. Ooh, see, I didn't say whether I was going to go, who was going to be first and second. Oh, oh. So but I, I am putting Ollie Clark first. All right, I'll, I'll put it out there. <laughs> uh, yeah. Looking forward to seeing how many reps Dan Benson actually managed. Have we got the same podium then? We've both decided on the same podium. I, Apart from you saying Dan's going to come first. I think so. Interesting. But that's this, one, of, one of those things about Strongman is... Things can change on a on a dime. Massively, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. I think it's been good that the the three that we've expected to podium have started off well on the log, and I feel like that's especially after watching last week. That sets you up right for the rest of the day because I a few lads last week missed that rep, and then that was it sort of for the rest of the day. Didn't really push to anything. So we've so got Jason Cook saying that Ollie Clark could take the win as long as he uh, controls the height and that's one of the things Ooh, that's yes. one of the things about these competitions yeah we have the, I think we have the live stream on Josh now so, so he's yeah. getting ready so you can see the weight on the bar on the counters in the center there between the lane so uh, this is the last warm-up attempt 146 kilograms oh that was that was very easy. He held it in the lockout to make sure he was happy. He's an easy rep for Josh. Easy rep, but uh, he made a bit of a face after that. I don't know, maybe he was expecting it to be easier? I think or... that's just Josh's face. <laughs> he just always looks really unhappy and upset. <laughs> so that's 146. So he's... He's declared he's going to go for 154. It's not, it's crazy as well because it's really not been long since he did the log, so it's a very fast turnaround. Hi, Becca! Hiya! <laughs> and he's, he's taking time out to, he's a man of the people, is Josh Lancaster. He's a man of the people. Very successful, strong man coach in his own right. Coached the under 80 kilogram winner last week, yeah. as well as the majority of the top 10. That's one of the things about these weight class competitions. The top 10 contains quite a few athletes coached by Josh Lancaster. So he's going for 151 now. This is a fast turnaround for Josh. A lovely clean. Oh my gosh. 
I was going to say, I mean... the easiest 151 I have ever seen. If, if you're in Josh's position, would you be thinking about pushing beyond the 154? If I hit the 154 first, then yes, absolutely I would not push heavier than that though. What's the point in putting that record so high that you can't get it again? <laughs> But that was lovely. And Josh has said as well that he's obviously got a lot of technique from weightlifters. So you can see with his split jerk, he spent a lot of time getting that right and spending a lot of time on the technique, which is massive. People love a split jerk and strongman, but the amount of people that absolutely hash it is horrific. And if you hash it, you get a little bit out of it, but you don't get your best. Whereas if you practice that technique, there's the chance of getting 25% more than your push press on a split jerk, so it's worth spending a bit of time and dialing in that proper technique. Absolutely, yeah, because it's it's less a press and more a catch. Your the, the the implement is sort of barely moving, really. If you do the split jerk correctly, you'll sort of drive the bar up to forehead sort of height and then drop underneath and catch it. Yeah. So this is 154 and a half that Josh is now holding. So this is the British record. He's got this. Josh taking a hit of those bespoke salts. <laughs> Have you ever tried those? Absolutely not. I'm sure he mixes them in his bathtub. So it's 60 seconds. Straight in. Nice, easy pull. Easy clean there. Oh, oh, oh. And he gets it down. We have a new British record. Josh Lancaster. Josh, Josh, do 160, do 160. <laughs> <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's Molly telling he me is, not to tell Josh to do 160. He's considering more. He is considering more. Josh, do 160. Do 160. I dare you. I dare you. Oh, Elsie coming over to congratulate her daddy. Oh, she's buzzing. <laughs> Oh, is she oh, going to share a reg? Josh is being presented. I don't think he's being presented. I, no, I think no, he's I just being think shown gonna, an Easter yeah, egg. She's not going to share it, no. I wouldn't either. <laughs> I hope uh, if you're tuning into the live stream, you are watching this with as many eggs as you care to have. All the on eggs. On this Easter Sunday. We have a selection of eggs here. We do have some eggs here. Ready. What's to be thrown at the athletes. That's what you said, you're going to throw the eggs at the athletes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Any silly behaviour this week, you're getting an egg thrown at you. But yeah, those those salts, I, I bought some tacky from Josh a couple of years ago. Mm. And they arrived in a white tub with this strange bottle, <laughs> which I at first thought it was tacky remover. Oh, no. So I nearly undid the lid and just poured it pulled it out. Into your hands. <laughs> That would have stung. Imagine but you'd have a little paper cut there as well. Jesus Christ. But all it took was just one movement of the lid and there was this hiss and this aroma hit me. I know Rhiannon's been taken aback by those salts in particular before as well. So this is 160 then, isn't it? Uh, we've got 158 on the display. So he just said to me, I'm not sure if you were able to hear it on the live stream, he's slightly concerned about the clean, he said. Yes. He's not sure he'll be able to clean it, but I think if he can clean it, I really have no doubt that he can press it with how easy that last 154 was. I don't see any reason why he can't press it. It'll just be the clean. He's going in again. All depends on the clean, he says. Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, he's down. He's down. Don't worry. 
I think he's going to call it. Yes. <laughs> well done, Josh. It will take more than a tumble well like that to put Josh Lancaster out of the competition. Oh, yeah. To be honest, I'm surprised he didn't try it again. Because <laughs> that's it's what he usually does. <laughs> Molly telling me there that he's not trying it again because she does actually want to go home at some point today. <laughs> it wouldn't be a strongman competition with Josh Lancaster in the lineup if he didn't trip over something. Oh, 100%, yeah. There has to be a dramatic fall. Yep. Otherwise, it's not a full competition, is it? Yeah, he's, he's done it on just about every stage possible to do. I remember he stacked it on the deadlift ladder of OSD after the first bar. <laughs> of course he did. So setting the deadlift up now. Yep, we are setting the Set deadlift. Five minutes before. We've got a little bit of a, a break. Have we got some time? I've got some treats. Have time for treats? I think we do. So I went to the shop the other day to especially get Danny a vegan egg. So here I will present you with your vegan egg. If you'd like to open it on camera for everybody. Oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> it's beautiful. A perfect vegan Easter egg. <laughs> tempted to just bite it. <laughs> you know what? Get your daily fats in. There this, you go. This will go very well with my uh, vegan pasta that I've got for lunch. There you go, perfect. And just to make sure that people didn't think I was ripping you, I did actually buy you a real vegan egg. Oh, that's so There nice. you go. So nice. <laughs> it can add to my collection of eggs that I have down here. So if you are an athlete or you are spectating and you're watching the live stream, if you want an egg, come and find me. <laughs> I have a selection of eggs. Well, I am, I'm the real winner today. I'm walking away with an avocado and an Easter egg. Uh -huh. And you know, avocados are expensive. <laughs> they are expensive. But before the deadlift four reps comes up, we are going to take a quick commercial break and we will be back with you soon. strongest athletes in Europe are coming to Leeds to win Europe's strongest man. This is my path, this is my job. So Tremendous battle! I've done it before so many times, I know I'm capable. The Highland Hope! Oh! With ease from Yes, Novikov! Alexei Novikov! the world record, ladies and gentlemen, Koryaka! Whoa! Look at this! From the back from Ukraine! So close! Edging the zone on Novikov with the fifth on their quickest! Koryaka with an enormous strike! Gets the fifth stone! And he may be the new man tonight! I'm Rihanna Loveless and this is the Chaos Competition Kit. It consists of the Chaos Grip Top, the Heavy Duty Underbelt, the neoprene shorts, and to tie it all off, we have the 30mm Chaos Lever Belt. Join me today, we'll take on a 420 yoke, and we'll see how this kit holds up.
My name is Rihanna Lovelace. I first broke the Deli Flow record in 2017. Since then, we've put over 100 kilos on it and used the exact same prep every single time. For the first time ever, this prep is now available to you guys. It includes a full 12 week peaking program, all your accessories with an RPE and a percentage scale. It's easy to transfer to your own training. On top of this, it includes my full velocity charts, keeping yourself on track. And as well as this, it adds a full document that goes through all the accessories, the hows, the whys, the whens, and then other pro tips on how to balance things like nervous system, how to make sure that you keep that peak exactly on point. And this is available exclusively from Chaos Strength. $49.95, you get access to the full thing. Take your deadlift to the next level with Lovelace Peaking Program. And we are back with you for the deadlift for reps. So we've got Sam Watson coming out first. Now, I mean, I, I think this, this goes to illustrate the standard of the athletes and the standard of the deadlifting. In the weight class scene, no athlete has elected for the lighter bar. So Everything. no one is doing 210, everybody is doing 250 upwards. And really, there's only about five or six lads that are doing the 250. The rest of the class, class have gone for the 290, so be interested to see what sort of rep fest this is going to be. <laughs> Nice. Good first rep for Sam there. Easy and clean that first rep. Lovely. Let's go. Good. He's doing a little rolling and then sliding that bar off his legs. Yeah. Has he got another one? Do we think? Now I see people divided about whether or not the roll into the legs is any good. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure. I think it's definitely personal preference, isn't it? I mean, it certainly works for Sam there. Yeah, great result. Four reps on the board. Okay, so Ben Sacri and Nathaniel Banks. So Ben Sacri is actually wearing my deadlift suit today, so hopefully that will bring him all the luck of Becca Wargan. <laughs> if he fails it now, <laughs> I'm going to be in trouble. <laughs> but no, Ben, a very good deadlifter, so hopefully we see some good reps here. I don't fancy wearing a deadlift suit topless, though. Oh, Those no. things dig in. I know, I've got to wear that again at some point. It's disgusting. <laughs> Why oh, start from Ben? For ben. Oh, and Nathaniel gets a rep on the board. He is nailing this. I wonder why he didn't choose to do the 290 yeah. this morning. I think maybe he's potentially changed his weight choice to play it safe after failing that 130 log, which is a sensible plan to do. Or is it in this? stacked class of deadlifters though because it's not going to be big points now is it if everyone hits 290 that is I mean yeah oh come on fight yeah, it yeah, just the last couple of inches yeah. from the lockup gets the down signal he got it I think lovely no Ben approached that call it, I think there I think Ben approached that similarly to what we were saying last week fast first few reps and when they start to feel like a grind take yeah. a rest go back in for one more smart way to play it okay so next up we've got Wayne Fulton and Dave Evans We're still at 250 kilos on the bar That was smooth from Jack Buchanan. Nice easy reps from both these lads here. Both yeah. men. Wayne Fulton got those long arms. Flying through these reps. 
Oh, Jack Buchanan stops his back as half a step. Bit of a wobble there. Is he going to have a breather? Can't really breather with the suit down there, though. Oh, he's going again. Oh. He's going again. And he gets the oh, down nice. suit. He's got such long legs. Wayne Fulton, meanwhile ticking along nicely, nice. every rep. I think Jack's going to run out of time here for this rep. This is, five seconds was called about five ah. seconds ago. <laughs> that was a big ask from Jack Buchanan. Yeah. Yeah. So we have David Evans going for 250 and Tom Cox going for 290. First athlete to do the 290. Now this is an interesting choice for Tom. I don't want to speak too loudly because he stood right in front of us. <laughs> but an interesting choice. David Evans on the 250 kilogram bar. Tom Cox, our first athlete, going for 290. He must be fairly confident because obviously he's zeroed the log, so we're starting at a, a hard starting point. So this should be, I'm hoping this is not a maximum lift for him. Otherwise, Tom's day could be quickly going downhill. Tom sporting the Chaos Deadlift suit. Both knees taking the knee to set up to the bar. And we're off. Easy first step for David Evans. Into it for David Evans. Oh, this is a tough ball for Tom Cox. Oh my god. Everybody is going to get behind Tom. Time. You at home start shouting as well. <laughs> Tom needs this. 30 seconds to get this rep. If he can get it up to his knee. Oh, no. Oh, no, no, no. Not the start. Not. Is he going to get back into it? 15 seconds. He's running out of time. He needs to do it now. David Evans is going back in for one more rep. Oh, that was spinal up from David, wasn't it? Uh, not the best start of the day for Tom, but I think he's really put himself out there obviously by right? picking these these bigger heavier weights. So fair play, the lad, fair play. You've got to put yourself out there sometimes and push yourself because you never know what your full potential can be. And sometimes if your expectations for a competition like this aren't necessarily to qualify, just go out and kind of set some PBs. Yeah. Sometimes it can be worth the gamble. Yeah, 100%. If you, you're just trying to push yourself to your absolute max, then it's worth trying. This is the situation where it matters whether you can get it or not, doesn't it? So it's good training practice for future competitions as well. Okay, so we've got Rich Molnar coming up. And Will Clark both on the, well, every athlete here on out is on the 290 kilogram bar. Oh, I imagine Rich Molnar is going to try and set. Week, he got 10 reps on the 270 and uh, had plenty more in the tank. So I wonder whether he's going to go all out now and put some big numbers up for the other lads to follow. Wow, easy rep for Will there. And again, wow! Okay, so Rich Molnar is off. I don't know, Rich Molnar not looking as I don't know, this is rep six though. For Rich Molnar, we could see double digits. Oh, Will Clark fighting. Oh, oh, that rep at the top there. Oh, Whoa. Rich still going, but slowing down a little bit. This might be rep 13 for Rich. Oh. Didn't quite get the lock out on that one! And he's down. He's down. I, I, I kind of lost count, but I think that was 12 reps. I think that was 12 good reps for Rich Molnar. We will get confirmation, we will let you know, but needless to say, Rich Molnar is the current leader and gave it 
everything. Wow. Wow. That was exciting. Let's have a look, see if it's already on strength results. How fast are we updating? Okay, we just had confirmation it was 11 reps. Wow. For Rich Molnar, five reps for well. Okay, so we've got Steve Stevenson and Jamie Gemmell. Jamie Gemmell. I'm going to call him Jamie Gemmell because it sounds great. great until he corrects me. <laughs> well, I'll say Gemmell because then one of us will be getting it right. Jamie Gemmell. No, it hasn't got the same ring. If it isn't Jamie Gemmell, I think you should change it. <laughs> All right, here we go. Steve Stevenson digging deep. Leg shaking. Knocks out that rep. And Jamie. Going well. Steve Stevenson needs to dig deep for another rep, but he got that one, that first rep. Oh, Jamie just stalling on that third rep there. Both athletes stalling now. Doesn't matter though, there's points on the board. Steven on the knees, 30 seconds left for both of these guys. Oh, I'm not sure it's there. Oh, no, I don't think so. I think this might be the end. Oh, I saw that bar for Steve, that was set just in front of the mid foot. So when he broke it off the floor, it swung back. Oh, and no. you've got to really fight with the bar when that happens. And at this weight, it's not yeah. a fight that's very easy to win. Also, an interesting choice to continuously try. I mean, I know that they're trying to get the next rep, but if you, if I feel like on deadlifts, you know when you're done, don't you? Yeah. Like, you know when the time's up, so... I think interesting to... Especially when this comp is so spinal, do you risk just isometrically pulling that bar off the floor for as long as you can without getting the rep or not? Especially with something like a farmers for distance coming up, where yeah. you are going to be relying to on your lower back and your legs. Conserve that energy. Perry okay. White and Graham oh, Williams. Perry White straight off the floor. Graham Williams up to the knee, sliding out of the thighs there. Wow. But this seems. Oh no, Perry! I was going to say it seems fairly yeah, comfortable for Perry. <laughs> but he managed to rescue that rep. Graham Williams rolling the bar in oh, again. No. So when you roll the bar in, you are expending just a little bit more surplus energy. Because yeah. 290 kilograms is a heavy bar to roll, roll yeah. into you. I mean, we do see some of the open weights, they do use that quite successfully. I think a lot of the open weights, though, roll the bar into them because they have so much body mass in the way of that starting position, the deadlift, and for you to get a breath in that position, if yeah. you have so much mass in your stomach sitting in front of you, it's very hard to breathe. So I know that a lot of the open weights roll it in so they can get that initial breath before the pull. But for these lads, that shouldn't be an issue. OK, so we've got Simon Walsh and Luke Shirley. Easy first rep for Simon there, and straight into second rep. Luke Shirley going for figure eight straps on this bar. This must be maximal for Luke, because he's taking his time. Oh, come on, Luke, come on! He's fighting, it's nearly up to the knee, he nearly. If he gets it up to the knee, I think he'll be able to hitch it, but he's doing the smart thing. Refocusing. Yeah. But Simon Walsh, we'll go in the suit. We're not seeing many lifters, many lifters deadlifting raw, but Simon Walsh is doing this 290 kilogram bar without the suit. Luke Shirley going back in 20 seconds. This is this is make or break for Luke. Oh, come on, Luke. Big pull for Luke. Simon Walsh bowing out. Come on, Luke. And it's done. No. Such a shame, that first rep for Luke was so close to the knee and it's agonising when that happens. So annoying. Both physically and mentally, just knowing you're Let's half an inch away from the knee and usually if you can get a deadlift bar to the knees, you stand a chance of hitching it to get the rep. We have Rob Nixon up next and Michael Sillis. Let's get it, Rob! Come on! Come on, Rob. Come on, Michael. Michael Ooh. Phillips. Strong rep. Come on, Rob! Come on, Rob. Rob Nixon is struggling. Come on, Rob. 
Michael Sillis treating these like eccentric reps. He is lowering that bar with control. So he got four reps. And by doing that, by lowering the bar slow, you're keeping the tension in the bar. So you, in theory, could make your next rep feel that much easier because you don't have to pull the slack up. That would have been a big rep. It's an interesting choice for lowering the bar under tension because I feel like it takes so much out of you. Like, I mean, when you're training, if you're doing slow eccentrics on any sort of event, it yep. is awful. So doing it on a deadlifting competition is definitely an interesting choice. Not one that I would make. <laughs> okay, so we've got Matt Diamond and Mark Cummins. And other people's favourite. Come on, Mac. Another people's favourite. Um, if he does well, I might share my Easter egg with him. Vegans together. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! Flying stuff from Ryan's Matt Diamond down. and Mark Cummins. Not far behind. We've got a race on. This is going to be good. Can they keep this pace up for that four and sixty seconds though? Matt Diamond pulling ahead. You can Mark's got his eyes closed. Yeah, you, I was going to say, you can <laughs> see the effort on Mark's face. Oh, Matt Diamond almost ticking along like a metronome. Mark Cummins, this is taking this is every ounce of this. Oh, come on, Mark. Oh, come on, hitch that. Fighting the hitch for the honey badger. Yes, he gets the down signal. Matt Diamond, oh, no, Matt's out, light -headed. Matt's out. You will see this on this event at these weights with these sorts of reps at this intensity. You've got, you're, you're working to maximal intensity, all our effort. You've got the suit on, which is restricting your breathing. So it is quite common to feel a bit lightheaded. But wow. Wow, wow. wow, that was close. So we, we had it just confirmed there. Eight reps for Mark Cummings there. Eight reps for Mark Cummings and nine, nine for Matt Diamond. Diamond. Wow. Okay, so we've got Jake Allen and Connor Smith. Are we going to see another similar sort of race? So when you set up... To, Strap yourself to the bar in deadlift suit. Do yeah. you go sumo and walk in or take a knee? I go sumo and walk in. I can't get anywhere otherwise. <laughs> oh, easy. Oh, Connor Smith really oh, using the suit to its full advantage. Getting those hips nice and low. Oh. We've got a bit of a blood pressure PB for Connor Smith here. He is going all shades of red. But Jake oh, Allen. Fighting nice. that bar as well. 30 seconds left. 30 seconds left. 30 seconds left. You can see both lads, their legs are just shaking as they lift this bar off the floor. Oh, Jake going again. Come on, he's above the knee. Come on, hit it. Come on. Yeah. Good fight from Jake. What a fight. Connor Smith tapping out there. Oh, look at him. Oh, he was getting a hug, he was just getting a suit taken off. <laughs> I mean, after an event like this, you might feel like you need a bit of a hug. <laughs> wow. Okay, so this, this, is be exciting. this is a heat to watch. Josh Lancaster and Dan Benson. Dan Benson, let's remind ourselves, got 11 reps on a 290 kilogram axle bar. That 11th rep was locked out as the whistle went. And what's he got to beat 11 from Rich? He's got to match or beat 11. Do you think he will? Or do yes. you think he'll play it I, I, think, I think he can. This is an event he can take Whoa, the win. Oh my god! That. Here we go. <laughs> this is easy. So we are. Six reps, halfway towards the lead in barely 15 seconds. Josh doing his usual fish technique. He's got fishing, but he's catching them reps. 
I have completely lost count with how many I have no Dan idea has how got. many times win. He's, he's, one, one. he's out for the win on this event, and I don't think anyone's going to be able to touch wow. him. But yeah, Josh Lancaster Josh. Yes. using that Derek Poundstone hit. Yes. I think I just heard 14 reps from Dan Benson. Shut up. 14 reps at 290 kilograms. Wow. What do we think? Do we think anyone's beating that? I mean, I don't think I'd bother. Yeah, yeah. I, I think, I think for Ollie Clark. He doesn't even necessarily need to chase Rich Molnar. No. Because Rich zeroed the lot. Exactly. So his points will already be down. So really, all he only needs about 10 reps. And that. And what's the next counter? Well, we're on we, eight, we had aren't we? Eight, nine reps. So uh, nine reps for, from Matt Diamond. Yeah, he wants to go for at least nine or 10. <laughs> Frank Parks is hyped. He is out for blood. He looks like um, he's off Mad Max and he's off to Valhalla, this lad. Where's Ollie Clark? He seems to be reigning in that height. Nice. Right, so we'll Easy see what these guys do. Solid from Ollie. Oh. Frank's just starting to steady off on these reps. Oh, oh Frank! Struggled with that lockout. Yeah. Oh my god, oh. why is he bleeding that much? Yeah, we've got some blood. <laughs> Ollie stopping to take a breath. 30 seconds left. Okay, we're, we're reaching Ollie's max. What is he going to do? 20 seconds, so he can take a good 10 second rest. Rest, give it one more go. Is it worth maxing this out though and expending all that energy like we said before? Okay, I'm thinking about it. Oh, he's talking to his coach. Yeah. 10 seconds, he's going back in for one more. No. No, he's no. decided again. Wow. Okay, so that's the deadlift event done and dusted. A masterclass from Dan Benson there. Wow, that was some impressive deadlifting now, wasn't it? That is insane. 290 kilograms. And that, honestly, those first six reps, I think, were pulled within about 15 seconds. They were speed reps then, were they? Speed. So we are going to be moving outside for the back toss. So the lads are already out there warming up. We are going to get the scores to you as soon as we're able to. But again, you can check strength results for the scores and standings as they happen. Let's dive into the chat. There you go. We have the scoreboard displayed for you there. Woo! It's just great. 14 reps. That is 14 reps. Insanity. Insanity. So Ollie Clark doing enough to keep himself in the top five in that event. Well, Ollie Clark still now in overall points is still sat in second place. So he's only what's that? I'm not very good at maths. One and a half points behind Dan Benson, so it's still all to play for here. And then we have Mark Cummings and Jake Allen in joint third at the moment with 41 points each. Interesting. Mark Cummins is going to, he, he must be really proud if of himself. Mark can pull third place here today, I'll be buzzing. Yep. <laughs> he is the people's favourite. Let's go. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Uh, and we saw the bag toss can really shake things up. We saw it last week. Massively, yeah. Well, like we were saying, it's, it's an event of technique really more than anything and the athletes that have been able to train this setup or very similar setups will always prevail so it'll be interesting to see what these lads can do and who's been training but have we got anything in the chat anything interesting just dipping back into the chat thank you to everyone for for tuning in to chaos live um, Chaos Live are going to be live streaming events throughout 2024 and beyond. So do keep an eye out next weekend. 
it is the turn of the under 105s. So even bigger boys lifting even bigger weights. And then after that in May, Chaos Live will be moving up to Edinburgh for the UK NS UK and Ireland finals. Whoop, whoop. That is Edinburgh. I thought that was Preston. Yeah. Preston. We're here. Your farm. <laughs> we'll be <Preston>. here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Danny might be in Edinburgh, but we'll all be here. <laughs> I better change my flights. <laughs> <laughs> So while we're waiting then for back throw, I've been thinking of some questions, obviously my usual silly goose behaviour. If you could be a strongman implement, what would you be and why? And you can answer this in the chat as well because I want to hear all your reasons, but there need to be reasons. I don't just want, oh I want to be this because it's cool. I need a valid reason. Uh, <laughs> Do you want me to tell you yours so you can have a chance to think? Do you want to tell me mine? I'll tell you mine. Ah, uh, go on. So mine is, I would, I'd like to be a yolk, mainly because I'd enjoy Crushing people's souls. I'd, <laughs> I'd be a sandbag because I'm everywhere and not many people like me. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. Come on then, chat. Someone tell me what you'd like to be. But yeah, Chaos, Chaos Live with the UK and British finals in Preston, 4th and 5th of May. Then in June, we've got Britain's Strongest Man for the weight classes, the under 80s, the under 90s, the under 105s. The 20, 20th and 21st of July, we have the Chaos Classic. Now, if you watched that last year, the Chaos Classic under 90 kilogram invitational, it was a hell of a competition. And this year in 2024, the under 64 ladies are getting a chance to shine. Uh, so that's going to be an awesome competition to tune into. It's going to be massive, that competition. I can't wait for the Chaos Classic this year. It's going to be so exciting. And so exciting that the women are getting the opportunity as well. It's a really cool comp. So a lot of effort and work's been put into. And the fact that the women can be on the same stage as the men is just mint. Yeah, and I, I think Rhiannon and Luca are loud and proud about the fact that it's going to be the heaviest under 64 show to date. And uh, you wouldn't expect anything anything less, to be honest. Absolutely not. These guys go above and beyond, so and we all appreciate all the hard work that they're doing. Yeah, do so much for the sport, for the weight classes, for, for getting the sport egg. out there. Have some eggs around there. Would anybody like an egg? <gasps> oh, Lou, running over. Only if you take your hat off, Lou. Oh, she did it! Like there you go. Avocado. Oh, <laughs> I bought all the eggs. Come over here. All right, while we're dishing out the eggs, I think we're uh, we're going to go to a quick commercial break. We'll dip into the chat and uh, chat with you guys. Thanks for everyone for tuning in. And we will be back with you for the sandbag toss. the strongest athletes in Europe are coming to Leeds to win Europe's Strongest Man. This is my path, this is my job. So Tremendous battle! I've done it before so many times, I know I'm capable. The Highland of oh. from Yes, Novikov! Alexei Novikov! the world record, ladies and gentlemen, Koryaka! Whoa! Look at this! From the back from Ukraine! So close! Edging the zone on Novikov with the fifth on their quickest! Koryaka 
with an enormous strike, gets the fifth stone, and he may be the new man tonight. I'm Rihanna Lovelace, and this is the Chaos Competition Kit. It consists of the Chaos Grip Top, the Heavy Duty Underbelt, the neoprene shorts, and to tie it all off, we have the 30mm Chaos Lever Belt. Join me today, we'll take on a 420 yoke, and we'll see how this kit holds up. My name is Rihanna Lovelace. I first broke the deadlift world record in 2017. Since then, we've put over 100 kilos on it and used the exact same prep every single time. For the first time ever, this prep is now available to you guys. It includes a full 12 week peaking program, all your accessories with an RPE and a percentage scale. It's easy to transfer to your own training. On top of this, it includes my full velocity charts keeping yourself on track. And as well as this, it adds a full document that goes through all the accessories, the hows, the whys, the whens, and then other pro tips on how to balance things like nervous system, how to make sure that you keep that peak exactly on point. And this is available exclusively from Chaos Strength. $49.95, you get access to the full thing. Take your deadlift to the next level with Lovelace Peaking Program. strongest athletes in Europe are coming to Leeds to win Europe's strongest man. Do 
This is my path. This is my job. So. Tremendous battle! I've done it before so many times. I know I'm capable. The Highland Oak! Oh! With ease from Yes, Novikov! Alexei Novikov! For the world record, ladies and gentlemen, Koryaka! Whoa! Look at this! From the map from Ukraine! So close! Edging the sword on Novikov with the fifth on there quickest. Koryaka with an enormous strike gets the fifth stone and he may be the new man tonight. I'm Rihanna Lovelace and this is the Chaos Competition Kit. Consists of the Chaos Grip Top, the Heavy Duty Underbelts, the neoprene shorts, and to tie it all off, we have the 13mm Chaos Lever Belt. Join me today, we'll take on a 420 yoke, and we'll see how this kit holds up. And we are back in advance of the sandbag toss. Just a little update regarding the scores and strength results. So in order to make sure that the competition could run as smoothly as possible for the athletes and for the stream, the event order was altered ever so slightly on the day. Unfortunately, on strength results, that means the events are out of order. So on the on strength results, I believe the next event coming up would be the Farmers. Yeah. It's actually the Sandbag Toss. So because of that, we're going to be unable to do the live scores because strength results doesn't allow editing once a competition is live. So there is going to be a brief window of time where strength results won't reflect what is actually going on. But that will all be rectified once the Farmers is done and dusted. But we will be able to give you updates as we go through. Uh, it's just one of those things that strength results is, is pretty inflexible once competitions are live. So just so you know, there's nothing wrong with the scores on strength results. It's just we're, we're racing to catch up with them. Yeah. But what strongman implements are you, the people, watching at home? I'm seeing a lot of Atlas stones. Hilarious as well, because I'm big and round. <laughs> yeah. I feel so for Andrew Gilbertson, dumbbell, because I am. That's sad. I think you need to be more confident in yourself. You might not be that dumb. Anyone else? Come on, send me some. You've got to have some interesting ones. No. So the, the sandbags, we've got a five bag series starting at 16 kilograms, going up to 24 kilograms. Two kilograms each bag. Do you like this event? Not currently. Not currently. <laughs> I, I haven't actually had it in a competition for two years now, so I haven't really needed to train it. Ah. So I, I might learn to fall in love with it again. I love Not that I, I, I didn't love it in the first place, to be honest. I've been doing them one armed, it's great fun. Oh, I suppose, yeah. I'm too scared to swing it with both yeah. arms yet. <laughs> and I think my um, my physio friends would probably kill me if I started swinging sandbags at the moment. <laughs> for, for those unaware, Becca suffered a, a bicep injury not so long ago. Yeah, time. yeah, big bicep reattachment three weeks ago. So similar to Dan, I think. I think Dan had exactly the same thing as me. So hopefully one day I'll do 
14 reps at 290 kilos deadlift too. <laughs> so, Maybe one day. We are nearly ready with the sandbag toss. Luke Shirley is going to be going out. We had some sad news that Tom Cox unfortunately has had to withdraw from the competition after feeling an injury after the deadlift. Yeah. It's Hard. not something we want to see, and but then. again, when you're, when you're working with those sorts of weights, these things just happen and yes. dealing with injury I think is a really important part of strong man and being able to deal with it sensibly as well is huge so best of luck for Tom hopefully it's not as serious as he thinks it is but I think we're nearly ready for the bag toss to begin see who is the best tosser in the under 90s I expect we will see some very strong tossing from all of these men I wonder how long we'll wait until all five bags go over because this is heavier than what the under 80 kilogram guys were working with last week mm. and it took quite a while for us to get our first full completed oh, yeah. run. Well we're finishing on 24? Finishing on 24, wow. Please, please, that is big. So like we were saying last week, 20 kilos, it's like a bag of corn, isn't it? Yep. And you're trying to throw that four meters in the air. Yeah, you, I, I stood under the, the frame this morning and just looked up and four metres is taller than you think it is. Oh, it's huge. Really huge. Ben Grunnell would be a Viking press because it sounds cool. <laughs> it's a reason. Nice. It's a reason. Ben Grunnell, Emma Grunnell's brother. Big shout out. Emma Grunnell, my favourite person at the moment because she made the Silly Goose song that is on my podcast with Jenny. And uh, honestly, the funniest song I've ever heard in my life. If you want to listen to it, you'll have to listen to my last episode of our podcast. But it is hilarious. All right, we are switching outside. Luke Shirley is just warming up. Those bags, I think they are set three metres yeah, three away meters. from the frame. And I can see one of the athletes wearing bunny ears. Yeah. Really getting into the spirit of Easter. Yep. Yeah. Okay, it's so a bright day. First bag is over. Whoa, the first bag nearly went into orbit. That's it. Nice, second one. A couple of swings for Luke. Oh, he's got it. Is he going to get them all? Just oh, missed. Just missed just it. He's not far off though. He could definitely get that. He's so he's just given given the bag a little kick with his knee to help it help the swing. Oh, but he put the bag back. He the bag. That was very nice, Luke. You get bonus points for being a nice person. Okay, so next up we got Rob Nixon. Wow, he looks like a pirate. So Rob Nixon likes long walks on the beach, so he probably likes sandbags. <laughs> the reach. <laughs> Wow. Solid. Over. Nice. Very close, Rob. Very close. Just. Oh, just touched the lip of that. He can definitely get this. He's yeah. taking his time. You've got this. See, it was said in the rules if a bag lands on top of the frame, it will count provided it stays there for a second or so. And it doesn't matter if it falls off, whether it falls forwards or backwards. Oh, excellent, Rob. Excellent. And he oh, yes. gets it. Nice. Can we please have Nathaniel Blanks, Sam Watson, please get ready to go up to Nathaniel. Nathaniel Banks is up next. So yeah, Nathaniel Banks has been in <laughs> he's been in the past few England strongest man under 80 kilograms. And stepping up with the big boys, eh? Last year, if memory serves correct, he got pretty close to the top 10. But he's made the choice to go up to the under 90s. Oh no, just a slight mis miscalculation there. 
He's... Oh, that's too high, the swing. Oh, no. I suspect Nathaniel hasn't really had the chance to, to train this event. He's getting the height, but not the, the trajectory. i definitely say this looks like he has not trained this particularly well. Poor Nathaniel. It's, it's a tricky one to train if you don't have the bags or something to throw the yeah. bags over. But yeah, you can see he's consistently getting the height. But, I mean, just a couple of steps back might serve him well. He's just losing too much momentum on that bag, I think. So he's not able to direct it where he needs to go. You can see it on the backswing. When they lose that backswing, the bag almost tips up and loses the momentum. Yeah. It's just not great for, for trajectory. Okay, so we've got Sam Watson. Straight over with the first bag. Well, this is a bit fast. Just misses with the third. Maybe get a little bit closer to the frame. Oh, he's got the height there. Again, it's just a trajectory issue. He's slightly losing power. Let's oh, no! Get his power. Good luck. Come on. So how close, yes. how close would you stand to the frame? It's dependent on how heavy it is. I mean, you always want to be as close to the actual bags as possible because the step back is losing time for you. But when them no, bags get heavier, you don't have as much power to throw them as far. You're not going to get the distance. So you need to be closer to the frame, obviously, to get, them, to get the height. But, yeah, it's just a very technical event and Again, like we were saying, this is one you need to train. Like, if you don't have access to these sandbags or a frame or anything, and you have it coming up in a comp, I'd advise to go and train it wherever you can so that you can get used to throwing the bags. Yeah, sometimes it's, it's worth travelling a little further afield to, to go to gyms that have these specialist pieces of equipment. 100%. And the good thing is there's so many gyms in the UK now that have a strongman kit available. Yep. Wow, nice. David Evans really utilising that triple Whoa, extension. Nice. He's, everybody get behind you. Come on, let's send this one. His heels are coming off the floor with the front oh, swing. The are they? There. Yeah. Yeah, they are. Yeah, so the heels are coming off the floor twice, which is I'm a sure unique. I don't know what the point of that would be. Yeah, I don't, I don't think it's adding anything, but I'm not sure it's taking too much away. No. I mean, maybe if you've got really long arms and really short legs to try and stop that bag from dragging along the ground, because that's obviously the last thing you want is that bag to touch the ground and that swing. Yeah. All right, Jack Buchanan. Up next. I wonder if he's like Nicola and likes to be called Bushanan. <laughs> <laughs> Rename him for the sake of today. Jack Bushanan. Okay. Goes. Excellent first back there. Wow. Straight into our bear. Out the frame. Whoa, Out the camera again. frame with that one. Yes. Are, Are we, we going to get a full run here? Yeah, I think we might. Whoa. We could do that. I mean, there, there is a lot of clearance from these He'd bags. He'd be getting these over five metres if he needs. Oh, yeah. He's going to get this. He is definitely one of the taller athletes that are competing today. Yeah, yeah. and he's using that to his advantage, isn't he? But his technique is fantastic. Solid. A couple of swings. Oh, that was close. Come on, he can get that. This is big points on the line for Jack. Come on. Bushanan. Oh, just rolled over. Oh, oh near. Come on. Do one you. more. You've got that. Come on, give it some That's beans, two Bushanan. Near misses. Oh. Let's tap three to the frame, please. Wait, wow. So Ben Sakri put some big talk up yesterday, apparently, when he was weighing in and did the bag run in his cross. So he is in the league, Jack. Oh. I see he's decided not to wear them today, so... Yeah, I'm not sure crocs are optimal for, for this event. No, slippy. Not even in sport mode. No. Andy 
He seems to be picking Ooh, up the bag. that was a bit better. That was a bit better. Resting it on the floor. Ooh, this is how I do my bag throw. Oh, okay. No. That was some big talk from Ben, clearly. Come on. No, come on, lad. Oh, holding his shoulder. I think something might have gone wrong here. Because this is not. This is not Ben's best showing, definitely. So historically, is, he, is this an event? Oh yeah, usually he'd be really good at this sort of event, so a bit of a shame. Okay, so Wayne Fulton. Wayne Fulton, aka the Easter Bunny. And his head looks exactly like an egg too. <laughs> Competing in England's strongest man under 90 kilograms, giving the national title the reverence it deserves. And he is doing little bunny hops backwards as well. But it's nice. Ooh, it's a it good run. It just up. is. Come on, Wayne. Keep them ears on, mate. Oh, very big swings here. Ooh. I feel like there's a lot of energy being expended on them swings. Come on, Wayne. Let's get Close. Back. Close. I was about to say you're a big swinger, but I think that could be taken out of context. So, would you do multiple swings on the back throw, or just one? Oh, the bunny ears are off. Lost and the bunny power. ears are gone. Oh, wait, get him back on. Oh no, he's good. Good game over. I, I think for this event, it's sort of you obviously want to get the bag over as quick as possible, so you want to try and do it in one swing. So that's how ideally you want to train it. Yeah. I agree. I, I have the same technique to Ben, who was just dragging the bag backwards, and that counts as your swing, and I find that works really well for me, and you don't lose any energy. So Steven, wow. Stevenson, and he's off. Power from Stevenson. Double Steve, let's go. What a fantastic back throw. Oh, wow, he's flying through over. these. Oh, oh, he needs to go back. He clearly thought he was going to get it, though. Very confident, wasn't he? He must have been training these and get them. Oh, oh no, that bent was a, his arms there. Yeah, that was a miss swing. The bag went a bit limp. Yeah, what we're talking about before, like losing that momentum is not ideal. Oh, God, oh, no. Yeah, you want to swing the bag. You don't want to allow the bag to swing you. Absolutely not. Double Steve's been thrown off. Oh no! That's, that's it. That I was think a, that's probably it. It was a knock to the confidence, wasn't it? God damn, Double Steve. Come on, Steve, let's get behind him. He just moved oh, very, very quickly. Yeah, when you get to the heavier bags, you, you only you have a couple of options, don't you? Yeah. Graham, to the platform. Jamie, please get ready. So Graham Williams, Williams up next. In 1961. Come on, Graham. And we're off. First pack successfully over. Plenty of height there. Lots of height. Maybe wow. too and much height. Two. Plenty of height over that one too. Oh, those bag swings are... And interesting, he's good, good, good. a bit of momentum there. Oh, That's but he's doing it. Score. Yeah, getting the job done. It's working. Maybe not the fastest, but... Very, very right now, because fourth and fifth bags are going to be huge points now. A lot of lads getting stuck on that third, that fourth bag. Yeah, this is similar to what we saw last week. Yeah. Are we going to put bets on who's going to get the first full run again? <laughs> I've just checked in the chat. Such a good Steve, they named him twice. <laughs> yeah, so I think Graham is on the backswing. You can see he's, he's swinging backwards, but the bag is almost following through and, and sort of curling back on itself, which makes it all the harder to pull through with the, the, the hip drive that you need to, to actually make the clearance there. So we've got Jamie Gemmell. Jamie Gemmell. Oh, are you okay? Tom's just coming to say goodbye. Let's 
We got a double thumbs up from Tom Cox. So I think he's, uh, he's disheartened, but he's he's okay. He will be back. He will be back. Oh, Jamie Jemmel playing it safe, nice and slowly, but great technique. We like it. Oh, just not quite the height there, though. Very, very close. The height looks there. Oh, the height was there, but not the distance. These athletes are helping him. We love this in Stromer. Josh did say yeah. yesterday while he was well done, Oh, yeah, well nice done. Done. Well That's done, what we Jamie. want to see. Yeah, Josh did say yesterday that he wouldn't be giving any pep talks out for bag throw so like he usually would. Being again. selfish. Come on, Jamie. <laughs> well, you were talking about who's going to be the first to make a full <laughs> run. You, you'd said, have to no fancy way, Josh Lancaster. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've got frame, four more Smith, before, but I'm, I'm putting money on now that the first person to finish this bag throw is going to be Josh out of the next few. What do you say? Do you think anyone else can get in before then? I'd like, I'd like it. I don't know, I like, like, to see I like it. the name Perry White, so I feel yeah, like he might get him just because I like his name. Oh, flying as well. Oh, no, I take that back. <laughs> He's not getting him. Yeah, that's, that's yes, the thing. To, to fancy someone for all five bags, you'd need them to do the first four in yes, one go. Yes, spot on, yeah. He nearly took out the frame with that one. There was some force behind that. Lots of swings here as well. Hmm. Nearly got taken. We, we've not seen as many athletes nearly He's taken out by sandbags this week. So I don't know. God. I don't know if the under 90s have learned from the under 80s last week. I hope so. If I see one person catch that sandbag, I'm going to go out there and start throwing fists. All right. Connor Smith up next. Have, oh, we, have we seen anyone get the fourth bag yet? I think we, I think we did. I think we did. I can't we did. remember. Oh god, sorry if you have got the fourth bag. I've already forgotten. Well, just sure we'll it's remember. It will be on strength results eventually. Come on, Carl. All right, so. Connor Smith. Got the legs, but has he got the back throw? Whoa, straight he's, into orbit. He's got the strength, but seems a bit tentative. Oh, just only over. Just so again, too I'll... close to the frame. The I think there, you You've got oh. this. Yeah, I, th I think this is a telltale sign of athletes that maybe don't have access to train the event as yeah. it is in the competition. Yeah. Oh, the fourth bag is very good points. So oh Connor, my god, he's got it! Nice! There's Are someone that's going to get this fifth. Sure he gets this fifth bag. If he gets this fifth bag, this that will be huge! Massive points for getting this fifth bag now. I think he's got the explosive power to get this over. Has he got the trajectory? Let's he, see it! He's got the legs. Come on, boy. Use the them power, big legs. Yeah. Yeah. Here he goes! And oh it's just God, over! He's done it! He's done it! There we are! Well, that's egg on our face. Wow! We both said that Josh Lancaster would be the first, but Connor Smith. He's done it! That's huge. That is huge points. Massive. Did you see how high his coach jumped in the air as well? Like he got an electric shock? I still think there'll be quite a few athletes that struggle to make all five in this in this final yeah, I agree. final few that are coming up. Good first Simon. Simon Walsh. Whoa! He is falling in them. Wowzers. Yeah, standing Woo. quite far out, probably, probably about two meters far away. out there. And it tripped him up there. If he was a little bit closer, it would have gone straight over. Good third Simon. He's been granted that. Okay, so it's on the frame, so it counts. <laughs> and he's knocked it over. Wow! On, there you go. That. I reckon he can get this. He's giving it all for this last bag. Oh, come on. Come on, let's get behind him. This is for the lead if he can get this. 
Ooh. Couple of swings. He's got 15 seconds. If he can do it in the next eight, he's in the lead. Next eight, eight seconds. seconds I think he, he might be standing a bit too far out. Very, very close. Yeah, yeah. I, I wonder if he was a couple of steps back whether that might have gone over. Yeah, I agree. Okay, Michael Sillis. Michael Sillis. That's another nice name to say, isn't it? Sillis. Getting his bags ready, making sure they're in the right position. I'm noticing a variety of footwear in this. I'm seeing Dan Benson getting ready. He's going to be doing this in Converse. We've got people wearing lifters. This is a good run from Michael. So far. No, not quite. A bit more power behind it. Josh Lancaster watching on in the wings there. Let's see if we can help you. Come on. No, losing power now. Josh Lancaster to the frame, please. Frank Parks. Frank Parks, get ready. You'll get to Josh. All right, so let's see what Josh Lancaster can do. And we should be pretty good at this. If, if he, he doesn't, doesn't get all these, these, I'll be surprised. Strictly speaking, this is his fourth event today. <laughs> After the log press setting a new British axle record at 154.5. It was 154.5. He went for 158 and didn't quite mm. manage it. And the, the deadlift for reps. So, yeah, this is, strictly speaking, event four. He doesn't like an easy competition, this job. Josh Lancaster. No. These are heavy bags though, so. Let's see what Josh Lancaster has got. He's very familiar with these bags. Straight over, this is what we need. Leaning back. He's looking. He's looking where he wants that bag to go. Just misses. Just missed it. You need to really get this on this next row, I think, to keep. He needs this. Staying in the lane, but. Some more salt. Come on. Last couple of big swings. Oh, so close. Oh, so close. Come on, Josh. What's he going to do? Have another break? More salt. <laughs> Oh no! Wow! Oh, I was wrong. That's all on me, Josh. There you go. Still, I think that was a, a fast, the possibly fast four, the fastest yeah. first four. I would, I would have said, said so. It was a fast four. four. So Josh, that was a very quick four bags from Josh, which just put him in second place. He's currently sat in second place, so that must be correct that we've only had one person do all five, and he has had the fastest four, so not the best, not the worst. Okay, Frank Park's coming up. He, oh, he's not using the handle. Oh, and okay, it and he caught oh. it. Oh, oh, we don't see it. it. I hear all of this, okay. everything about it. Yeah, this is this no, is like unconventional to say the least. It's working though. Why? I don't know how long it's gonna work though. No, uh, no, no, no. Come on, let's get the idea. I mean, the handles are there. The, the handles there for a reason. Yeah. But you're just not getting any swing off that bag. You're getting no momentum by doing this. Who's this and coach? He is. He is vertically leaping. I do not like this. He's a tall guy as well. He's losing out on so much power yeah. by not using the handles. There's... I don't understand this at all. Oh, stop catching the back, man. Nah, I'm going to turn off in a minute, me. That's it. Go like this. There was a lot of wasted potential, I'd say. Yeah. Massively. 
if that's not a learning curve, I don't know what is. Yeah, I mean, there's there's a reason why you've, you've why you only don't seen do that. Yeah. Why you don't do that? That's that was what I was how about not to say. To do bag for her. I don't care. I don't care if you don't like me, Frank, for saying that. That's not how you do it. Will Clark, up next. Yeah, I can't imagine we're going to see any any athletes coming up that are going to adopt a similar approach to Frank there. No. Good oh, from Will there. Lovely. He's got quite a bend in his arms yes. though. Yeah. It seems to be oh, working. It's working though, though yeah. Three. Onto his fourth. Oh, that is good. Challenge Josh Lancaster for a fast first four. So this this bag, if he gets he this, oh, so 56 seconds is the time to beat for all five bags. So if he gets it on the first go, he'll have done it. Yeah. Very close. Oh, no. Not now. Quite. This is where I wonder if he kept his arms long and loose, whether he'd get the momentum that he needs to get it over, but he is still getting the height. Needs to have a breather. Great well done, Will. Okay, so, four bags for Will, but that could be a challenger for Josh Lancaster's current second place. Still only one man completing all five bags. We only have six athletes left, so this fifth bag is going to be big points. That's what this kind of event can, can do to the, the, the leaderboard. Mm. Jake Allen is off. Oh. oh, not the trajectory on that bag there. He needs to be a bit closer to the frame. There we yeah, go. Yeah, straight over. Again, I think another athlete that probably hasn't trained throwing the bags over a frame. Oh, wow. Well, these are getting better and better, actually. I take he's, it back. He's settling into it, finding his groove. He's warming up, wasn't he? Oh, I just missed that. A little bit of a miss there. Yes. But still, as we've wow. seen, four bags, big points. Yeah, massive. He can get this fifth one, which, I mean, I don't see why he can't. He's a very tall athlete as well. Very close. Oh, that was close, that. Oh, very, very Christ. close. Well oh, man, he was not the far up there, was he? All right, so we've got Ollie Clark. Ollie Clark coming up. So just for context, did this event, these weights, this height was one of the events in the final day of the official Strongman Games and Derek Owens in the under 90 kilogram class smashed this run in just about 16 seconds. Oh, he did. And from a last minute call up in his jeans. Last minute call up. I noticed Ollie Clark is wearing work boots. I wonder if that's... Uh, oh, to get the height. Well, that's that's what Derek Owens. He was wearing uh, work shorts and work Come boots. On, yeah. Let's see it, Ollie. Good first There's Ollie. Ooh, go ahead, throw from, them from where from they are. three meters out. Oh, oh, my God. Third bag. Oh, he's got it. Fourth bag. Moving a bit closer he's with the four. Yeah. Here we go. Have we got one? Yeah. Nice. Wow. What a fantastic bag a new that, leader, that's going to be hard to beat that. That, that is, is going to be, be hard to beat. Very tricky. I'd like very to know tricky. what the time is on that. 16 oh, seconds, point nine two. Oh, can we get a time check on Derek Owens' run? Oh, wow. I, I think that was pretty close. Mm, I think it was. That was fast. Uh, Mark coming, setting up the bags. He's off. Good, let's go. Taking his time. 
So I, I, we have just done a quick search and it seems as though Derek Owens Flawless run last year at the official Strongman Games was 17.57 seconds. So in terms of time, Ali Clark smashed it. Oh yes, both back over for Mark. This is great. Come on, Mark. Okay, this is going to be huge for Mark. We've got two men, all five bags. It's a battle for the first four. So close. Oh, I thought he was going to call it there, but he's not. He's trying again. Come on, lads. You can do this. You're not far off. Big sling. Oh, no. Just missed it. That was good, though. So we have Matt Diamond coming up next. So we've got three athletes remaining on this event. Matt Diamond, quick off the mark. Oh, taking his time with these bags, I think. Okay. Nice second bag, not a lot of height though. Oh, we can see this third bag from Matt. That's it. That was really good. And you can see that little fist bump. Very close, He's happy with that. Not quite there on the floor. You can see how oh, no, I don't think that's going to go. Come on, that let's get behind him. Okay, Matt Diamond, he's going back in. He's not giving up. And that's what we like to see. Well Giving it his all. Can we please have Richard Molnar to the frame? Dan Benson, please get ready. Alright, we've got Rich Molnar. After smashing out 11 reps on that 290 kilogram deadlift, passing out. <laughs> now he's on the sandbag run, which is heavier in the sandbag run he did just seven days ago. Mm. I don't I don't think anyone is troubling Ollie Clark. I think Ollie Clark's think so time either. is safe. Yeah. So the priority for we've got Rich Molnar misses the first bag! Oh no <laughs> I mean Oh he got there is he I guess this could just be a tired athlete. Three huge competitions in a five week span. And I mean the, the events the events that are to come. So that fourth bag is the same weight as the fifth bag from last week for the under 80s. So we smashed that. Now we've got this 24 kilograms. Very close up, mate. Oh, just not quite. Uh, is he going to try again? Come on, Rick, go now. Yeah, there he is. Oh, yeah, our time. Very, very close. Rich was up in ultimate. Okay, one athlete Dennis. remaining, Dan Benson. Benson. Dan Benson, the man of the hour. So we'll see how he approaches this. He knows five bags are valuable. He knows a quick first four is also valuable. He'll have to do a quick first four to limit point lossage, I think. If he doesn't, there's going to be problems. Setting up the sandbags exactly as he wants them. Come on, Dan. And he's off. Okay, so Dan Benson not taking the Ollie Clark approach. And he's dragging the bags back to the frame. So this is a more deliberate approach, I'd say. Okay. Oh no, this is not great. 
Okay, so he's got four bags. If he gets this fifth. And he does. And he does. That's. I think. Oh, just looked a little bit nervous there. Like he was a bit trippy on his feet, wasn't yeah. he? Yeah, I don't know whether maybe he had Ollie Clark's performance in mind because, you know, Ollie Clark and Dan Benson, they are, I would argue, the favourites to take the title today. Um, but yeah, what an event. We had some surprises. That that run from Ollie Clark, that was amazing. Absolutely incredible. And I know. I know that Luke and Rhiannon do their best to try and replicate the OSG setup. Hey? Ooh, ooh, come, come over here, Shen. Come up. Hey, come over here. Come over here and have it out with us. Let's go. Come on. I've already got a war with you, pal. Frank Park's coach. I'm, uh, Shane's trying to argue here that Frank's bag throw were good. <laughs> Why are you not doing it then? Why are you not doing it? That's not an excuse. Josh is coaching too, but he's doing it. Uh, Shane giving some smack talk over here. <laughs> kicking off. Oh, I actually think he might be quite annoyed about that. That's even funnier. I mean, in, oh, I might need a minute. I mean, in my defence, I was I was questioning. I wasn't criticising. I said it was I garbage. Say, I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> just 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 so long as just so long as. It, ah, Luke agrees. Oh, it was garbage. Luke Davis. <laughs> Owner and operator of Chaos Strength Gym hosting the competition. Ah, here we go. Bag throws were goofy. The live stream agrees with me. <laughs> Shane, you're going to need to sort that out, pal. <laughs> oh, so I've just had on the live stream as well OSG bar is set at 4.6 metres, apparently. Please right. correct if wrong. So we'll yep. have to double check that. We will have to double check. We will have to double check. I, I do remember when. This was an event in 2022, which was, no, yeah, 2022, Luke and Rhiannon made sure for the under 80s at least that it was as a, as close to the OSG setup as they were able to make it. So yeah. it could be that the frame was a little bit higher, but I, I'd be, I'd be interested to watch Ollie Clark's run back and see whether the clearance, whether he did Yeah, did have whether it would have been clear of 4.6 or not. I mean... Regardless, that was a, a flawless Impressive. run. To throw those those bags from three meters out Huge. and absolutely nail it each and every time. Huge. So next up, we've got the endurance event. We've got the farmer's carry for max distance. This is gonna be a great event and we're doing it head to head today, which I think is way better than doing it on your own because it's yep. very hard to compete against yourself. And if you have someone else pacing you by your side, it's it's almost easier because you can use that person to push you on and give you a little bit more like oomph with the event. Yeah, absolutely. It's unlimited pickups as well. So there's there's no dead zones, there's no it's it's just pick it up, go, ten meter run, drop and turn, yeah, as many times as as you can, seventy five seconds. What are we thinking? What do we think winning winning distances are gonna be? Hi live stream! It's the uh, <laughs> British Axel world record, record holder. holder is, well, not world record, British, sorry. Uh, just popping in to say hello. So the athletes are having a good time. It's been a great day. I think the vibes today the, are very good. The they coaches are... are a bit stressed, it seems. <laughs> <laughs> Won't say any more about that, just in case. I mean, um, it, it, must, it, must be, it must be tough being a coach, because obviously Shane is coaching quite a few of the athletes. I'm that not, here that's today. no excuse. No. Anyway, I think the winning distance for the farmers, um, I'm reckoning your best the best effort's gonna be 80, 80, 90 meters here, maximum. Because yeah. is it one, 130 a hand, 120 a hand? I, th I think it's 120. 120. I think it's 120 per hand. I'm gonna say, I'm putting it out there now, your best distance is gonna be 80. If anyone does over 80, I'll give them a cream egg. Yeah, when we, uh, 
when we cut to a break, I will I'll have a look because I, I have a feeling that Max Distance Farmers was an event at Britain's Strongest Man under 80 kilograms a year or two ago. So that could give us some sort of indicator. I think it was a similar weight as well. Yeah. So we are going to cut to a very quick ad break and we will be back with you for the endurance event the farmers carry for Max Distance. strongest athletes in Europe are coming to Leeds to win Europe's Strongest Man. This is my path, this is my job. So Tremendous battle! I've done it before so many times, I know I'm capable. The Highland Hulk! Oh! With ease from Scotland! Yes, Novikov! Alexei Novikov! the world record, ladies and gentlemen, Koryaka! Whoa! Look at this! From the back from Ukraine! So close, edging the sword on Novikov with the fifth on their quickest. Tony Acker with an enormous strike gets the fifth stone and he may be the new man tonight. I'm Rihanna Lovelace and this is the Chaos Competition Kit. Consists of the Chaos Grip Top, the Heavy Duty Underbelt, the Neoprene Shorts, and to turn it all off, we have the 30mm Chaos Lever Belt. Join me today, we'll take on a 420 yoke and we'll see how this kit holds up. My name is Rihanna Lovelace. I first broke the deadlift world record in 2017. Since then, we've put over 100 kilos on it and used the exact same prep every single time. For the first time ever, this prep is now available to you guys. It includes a full 12 week peaking program, all your accessories with an RPE and a percentage scale. It's easy to transfer to your own training. On top of this, it includes my full velocity charts keeping yourself on track. And as well as this, it adds a full document that goes through all the accessories, the hows, the whys, the whens, and then other pro tips on how to balance things like nervous system, how to make sure that you keep that peak exactly on point. And this is available exclusively from Chaos Strength. 49.95, you get access to the full thing. Take your deadlift to the next level with Lovelace Peaking Program.
with of the strongest athletes in Europe are coming to Leeds to win Europe's strongest man. This is my path, this is my job. So. Tremendous battle! I've done it before so many times, I know I'm capable. The Highland Hulk! Oh! With ease from Scotland! Yes, Novikov! Alexei Novikov! For the world record, ladies and gentlemen, Koryaka! Wow! Look at this! From the map from Ukraine! So close! Edging the sword on Novikov with the fifth on their quickest. Koryaka with an enormous strike gets the fifth stone and he may be the new man tonight. I'm Rihanna Lovelace and this is the Chaos Competition Kit. Consists of the Chaos Grip Top, the Heavy Duty Underbelt, the Neoprene Shorts, and to turn it all off, we have the 30 mil Chaos Lever Belt. Join me today, we'll take on a 420 yoke and we'll see how this kit holds up. And we are back with you. Uh, we got the results in from the bag toss. Ollie Clark taking that event win with a time of 16.92 seconds. Uh, we did find out that the OSG frame is a bit higher, so officially, officially doesn't challenge Derek Owens' amazing run. But I think we can all agree that Ollie Clark's run from today was just absolutely flawless. Dan Benson managing to sneak in in second, getting all five bags in just over 30 seconds. And we've got Connor Smith with five bags in 56 seconds. And coming in fourth, Josh Lancaster getting four bags in 17 seconds. So that was a very quick first four bags. Thank you again for joining us on this live stream. Hope you're enjoying it. We're having fun. Uh, we have got the farmer's carry, the distance coming up. This is going to be brutal. We are going to see bodies. We do actually have another athlete that unfortunately has had to withdraw. Uh, ben Sacri, we saw on the sandbag toss after I think it was the third bag. Uh, he walked off grabbing his shoulder, so it seems to be some sort of issue there. Uh, so it's a real shame for him. Um, but we are going to crack on. We've got Nathaniel Banks coming out. He's going to be coming out doing this event solo, which is going to be incredibly tough to, to set that sort of benchmark. But as for distances, you were thinking, what, 80, 90 metres? I think 80, 90 metres is going to be the top, the top end, the top yeah. end, 100%. We were just having a conversation just before this event, um, me, Luke and Shane, about Dan Benson. So... Shane was saying that Dan Benson's grip is feral, like the best, but he did actually tear his bicep apparently on farmers. Yes. So it'll be interesting to see. I know for one, like my grip has definitely changed on the hands that I have that bicep tear on. So it'll be interesting to see if that's made a difference and also how much it's going to get in his head. Because if you've already had that tear during this event, it's a very mindset thing to get back into it, isn't it? And we are going to get Dan Benson and Ollie Clark going head to head. Ooh. So, this will be interesting. That is going to be a very interesting heat to watch. Please give all spectators, all children, 
So you, as many pickups as you need. 75 seconds. So people are getting a bit upset on the live stream about me calling Shane out, but I don't care. Me and Shane are fine. If you've got a problem, that's your own problem, not mine or Shane's. <laughs> So let us know in the chat, what sort of distances do you think we can expect? So last week for the under 80s, we had a similar but different event. It was uh, one length with the farmers, one length with a 110 kilogram sandbag, and the best we got was 70 meters. Now, I think because it is just the one implement, it's reasonable to assume that we'll see a bit more distance than that. So yeah. could we get 100 meters? Come on, mate, yes. So we're having banks out Good. now. Just short of the line. Just needs the front of the implement to break the line. This is a very heavy weight for these athletes. Come on, the distance as well. That's it. Struggling a bit for that next pickup, I think. Oh, I think he's going to fall. He's pulled it there. Can we please have Sprinting Lane 1, Daily Lane 2? Yeah, that's the one. Come on, Sprinting Lane 1. Daily Lane 2. Okay, so we've got our first head to head. It's Frank Parks and Jamie Gemmell. There's a Jamie Gemmell. Who's going to get the ball? If anyone in the chat can let us know whether it is a hard or soft G, that'd be nice. He's got past the point. He's getting called Jamie Gemmel anyway. It sounds better. <laughs> I, I think I agree. agree. <laughs> now, Frank, Frank, all to play for now. Come on. <laughs> Don't be messing about like you were with them bags. Getting height. <laughs> Self talk from Frank. Whoa! That is quick. That oh. is quick. He's not missing the bag. I thought he was going to take us out. <laughs> I'm slightly concerned. Wow. If he can keep that pace up for the next 60 seconds. Okay, a little stumble there. I think he just tripped over his feet. But the pickups are looking easy for the bow. And he is speedy. Now, Jamie Gemmell is just creeping out in front. But Frank is quick. Frank is quick on these hands. This is a much, much better event for Frank Parks. Jamie Gemmell falling behind now. Dropping just shy of the line. If Frank can stand up with these, and Jamie goes ahead. Who's going to break the line first? Jamie and Frank, but now they need to turn around. They need to come back. Frank's going, he's going, he's going. What's going on? Cramp. Frank is feeling some sort of cramp, cramp in his leg. So this is for Jamie. Jamie can do it. Yeah, Jamie awesome. is our current leader now. Oh, this, this 75 seconds is taking forever, my God. Oh my God, this is the longest 75 seconds ever. And another oh, length from Jamie. Jamie. Come on. Frank is still feeling that cramp. Oh no, Frank. Wow. What an effort from both men. That was that was cat and mouse. Wow, that was impressive. Interesting start. I mean, that that was the first head to head. I don't know if, if I'm going to be able to. If these are all this oh. exciting, I actually might pass out. I thought I lost my voice last week. It's exhausting. Oh. <laughs> I'm too hyped. Can we but yeah, I would, I would certainly say that's that's some element of redemption for Frank Parks there. That was Massively, yeah. Can't Hopefully take away just a cramp and not yeah, an injury. Someone get him an electrolyte. Come on. He's he's still within those handles. No one wanting to move the farmers. <laughs> but he's he's having trouble walking away. Yeah. Hopefully that's all it is. Hopefully it is just crossed. I feel bad now. Sorry, Frank. This is a hundred and twenty kilo set man. 
Yeah, there we have it. 120 kilos per hand, 240 kilograms total. Huge weight. Huge weight. So we have Sam Watson and David Evans up now. We're off. Strong pick up from David. Oh, neck and neck, neck at the minute. Good. Quick turnaround. Let's go, Sam. That's it. That's Sam. what we need from Sam. David just taking his time, but sensible to try and pace this event, I think. Especially when it's 75. Minutes. Yeah, and Sam parks those farmers' handles quite far over the line. You only just need to park yeah. And when it's an event for distance, it would serve you well just to. Yeah. Sam just taking a little break. Let's go, Sam! Just having a little bit of a break there. Going back in, pushing each other. That's it, David Evans off. Sam not far behind. 20 seconds. Honestly, this 75 second, 75 second time limit just must feel like an eternity. And David's coming again, aren't we? Valuable, valuable meters for David Evans. Yes! And Sam! Oh, Sam's going Digging oh, deep! Just missed out on the time there. Oh, God, he looks like he's not having a good time, Sam. It's okay, breathe. So these athletes, they'll be, they'll be used to doing farmers' runs for 20, 30 metres, 40 metres in particularly mm. harsh competitions, but chaos are asking them to push beyond that. Yeah. And these, like, the training for max distance events, oh, my God, awful. I bet these lads are sick of maxing out these farmers. How would you train it? Would you have a, a distance in mind and train to that distance and then try and push it further on the day? Yeah, uh, so the way that obviously I'm coached by Molly and Josh and all them, so a lot of the time it's ham. <laughs> the, the coaching technique is ham. So we do runs, speed runs. I'd probably work out where I sort of thought I was going to be and then pace it, I think, quite sensibly. Um, but I'd definitely do a few max runs at 75 seconds to sort of see where I could be. I'd want to know exactly what sort of what sort of distance I was looking at before I began this event. Okay, we've got Perry White and Matt Diamond. Perry White. And, and we're off. Matt Diamond. Pulling ahead, Harry White looking a little shaky on this. Yeah. Well, Matt Diamond going straight back in. Breaks Matt Diamond straight way. back in. Talking, talking footwear. I wonder if Harry White's shoes might not be the best choice. I can kind of see from where I'm sitting the soles of his shoes. Like his feet are almost coming inwards. Yeah. Maybe a bit too much cushioning on those shoes. Possibly. And as well, because we're on grass track, like that, if that's a maximal weight for you, yeah. you want to have your feet as flat to that far as possible, so as much of a wide base as you can. Oh my god, did Matt Diamond's belt come off on that run? <laughs> Matt Diamond is just... He's not bothered, he's just picking going. Up. He's like a rhino, isn't he? He's yeah. got such a wide flat. These aren't, yeah, these aren't the fastest runs, but these are confident. These are confident. Oh, Perry White getting Perry White is struggling like, now. And this is where it's going to start. Well, wow. that was the time limit. But those pickups, when you fall just short. Because obviously in an ideal world, you'd finish your length. You'd put, Handles down, finish a length, put the handles down. Yeah. It's those drops halfway can uh, be just physically and mentally. Picking yeah. those farmers up again and again. You want to be doing as little picks as possible. And you know if you've reached a point where you're dropping them, often they land funny, they can land on top of each other, they can Yeah. Whereas if you're at the end of the run and you're putting them down, you're making sure to put them down Sensibly. in as optimal position to be able to pick them back up again. Yeah. Graham Williams and Luke Shirley up next. Oh, Luke Shirley is so 
cool, isn't he? I really like him. He looks like um, a park ranger or something, doesn't he? Yeah. Like you'd see him in the woods doing outdoor woodland man things. <laughs> I don't know if that's what he's like, but that's what he looks like. <laughs> So Luke Shirley is one of those athletes that will dig deep. Yeah, good start. <laughs> Pretty sure Graham Williams was sticking his tongue out there, so there, <laughs> rude. Wow, Luke just pipping ahead there. Yeah. Graham, Graham's shaking his hands as his grip's oh, starting to no, feel it already. already. <laughs> Luke Shirley just... Dropping, turning, picking up and going again. Nice. Yeah, great. Graham's hands aren't feeling 100%. And once your grip goes, that's kind of it. Right, this is where Luke Shirley needs to dig. He's going, this will be his 50 metre mark if he gets this. He will be, yeah. You could see he was on the verge. Luke Shirley was on the verge of dropping those handles, but he was just telling himself, hold on, hold on, get to the line. 15 seconds left. Come on, 15 seconds left. He can do another length. And both Graham. these men, Graham's down. Oh, well done. Well done from Luke. 60 metres. Luke. Both men collapse into their knees. Luke will be happy with that. Luke Shirley placed first at the UK NS England Strongest Man earlier this year. So he will be competing again at the start of May at the UK finals. So again, this is another, that's, a, that's another very heavy competition. Yeah. And, what? and the fact that he's a natty in this competition as well is really impressive. I yeah. know there's uh, quite a few lads who are competing in this un these untested comps who are natty. And fair play to them because it's not really an even playing field, but it's nice to see that the lads are coming to do it. Well, I mean, we, we just saw yesterday uh, Kyle Scott under 80 kilograms set a new at the yeah. Stone Load world record. World record. After placing fourth at OSG. Uh, here we have Steve Stevenson and Wayne Fulton. It's double Steve and Wayne slow and steady. But Steve is going at quite a pace. Going in for his third lap now. The pickup's looking a little bit trickier. That was a that was a bit of a wonky pickup from Steve there. But he recovered it well. Take a second, get some Mary. Now go, let's go. Go on, Steve, let's go. Now step. Wayne Fulton just Double taking wobble. a break. Never wobble on. The ball flags are here. Yep. Right, Steve, get Eric. Nearly there for Wayne, and he drops it. Now go. If you look at their legs, it looks like they're moving through a swing hand, doesn't it? Yeah. Steve Stevenson. Oh, he needs both men need to dig deep. Yeah, that was a bad pick. Every inch counts. Dying seconds. Is Wayne gonna do it? Just before the whistle, Wayne Fulton completes another length. Wayne Fulton looking very unsteady on his feet there. You could tell that took a lot yeah. out of him. Rob Nixon, surveyor of strength, surveyor of strength, likes long walks. I don't know if he's going to like this long walk. <laughs> We'll find out. You can see under the jorts he's wearing the odd objects. Hoop proof shorts. Hell yeah, odd objects. If you're watching, sponsor me. <laughs> I'll poop in the shorts if I have to just to get a sponsorship. <laughs> Alright, here we go. Rob Nixon, Jake Allen, Jake Allen! Storming out the gate. He is not here to play Rob Nixon. That grip. 
failing this early in. That's not the one you can see on his face. If Jake can stick this pace out, he is laughing. Come on, Rob. Get on, what's he doing, Rob? Right, looks like Rob yeah. maybe having a chalk malfunction, but Jake yes, Allen. That's better. Back and forth. I think is this 40 metres for Jake? 40 seconds. And he's got 40 seconds left, so the is the time to be the distance to be 60 metres now? I think so. 40 seconds left. Jake. Alan is this. chugging away, whereas Rob Nixon is, is grinding out every metre he's able to. Rob Nixon really struggles with this here. Reapplying that chalk, that's two reapplications of the chalk in this 75 second run. Maybe Jake's 75. Move, Jake! Jake Allen just missing the whistle. Was that 70 metres? Oh, Rich Molnar and Simon Walsh. So yeah, in terms of the scores and the distances, we will have strength results back up at the end of this event. So you will be able to dive back in and check the scores live. did hear 70 metres for Jake Allen. That is a heck of a target. Uh, Gemmel with a hard G. We've been confirmed in the chat. Well, if it was up to me, I think you should change it. All right. Simon Walsh, Rich Monar, Simon Walsh, like a bow of hell. First length done. He might finish this link before Rich. No, Rich has picked it up. Wow. This really is impressive from solid, yeah. solid from Simon, yeah. Rich just trying to catch up here. So last week, Rich Molnar was carrying 110 kilogram farmer's hand. This week, 120. And you can see it's, it's getting to him. Where Simon Walsh stopped for a breath. On, Looking on, solid. On, I mean, Rich, when he's walking, on, is looking on, absolutely rock solid. It's just, you can tell the boy's tired. Simon Walsh, that grip has started to go. You can tell. He's got to go again, though. That's it, that's it, that's all he needs, just five seconds. He just needs to pick it up and just nudge it forwards. Rich Marner on the whistle. Only just, only just. On the whistle. Okay, next up is Mark Cummins and Jack Buchanan. Buchanan. Mark Cummins having a great day today. He is having a great day. I had a little chat with him just before this event and said, come on, get your ass into gear, let's go. <laughs> You're the people's favourite. Show them what you need to show them. So hopefully we'll see something impressive here. Was mentioned in the chat that he will run a length of 13 badges. <laughs> 13 badges? We will confirm what length that actually is, but... Yeah, how long are batches? Not very long. And we're up. Quick yeah. from both men, but Mark Cummins just edging out in front. And versus the badger. Mark Cummins' laces are slightly undone yeah. and stressing me out. Yeah, yeah. I do not like <laughs> Could, could be a trip hazard, we hope not. We but both men going back in for they, these guys. Neck neck. This is neck. This is the sort of head to head we want to see. This is yeah. the excitement. Like, who's going to put a head? Mark is the Mark first. Going in for that pick up. Come on, lads. This will be his 40 meter mark. Jack, I think it's starting to hit him now. Yeah. You can see he's looking unsteady. He's huffing. He's huffing. Come on, Mark. Get back in there. 
20 That's seconds it. left. 20 seconds left. That is time for two more lengths if Mark does a quick drop and turn. Mark is looking physically done, but mentally he needs to dig deep. Jack Buchanan has caught up though. Oh, he's, he's, he's looking to his. Mark was looking to Jack Clay. Oh, no! Jack just oh, in front. That was a thorough finish. I do not know. I don't think that's going to get counted. Bouchanan, I think, went for a little bit of a I think that was a, a bit of a slide, but both men. Oh, Check the VAR. <laughs> Yeah, Mark Cummins, you said it yourself, people's champion, vegan strongman, so yeah. he, was, he was one of the first strongmen that I learned was vegan when I was very early in the sport. So it's just someone that showed me that you can solely eat broccoli and compete. <laughs> the broccoli only diet. It's possible. Come on, Michael, pace yourself nice from you, this. Okay, Will Clark and Michael Sillis, we've got three more heats left. Wow. Quick from Will Clark. Wow. Yeah, Michael Sill is doing his best to catch up and catch up. He is just about doing. So it's a quick start from Will Clark. But Michael Sill is clawing it back. Is Michael Sill is going to edge in front? He's caught up. Sill is first to drop the handles there. Who's going to be the first to pick up? Straight back up. For Michael Sillis. Will Sillis Clark. Come on. Will Clark is burning out. But Michael Sillis still going. I would say strong. 15 seconds he, he has yet to drop the handles before the line. What kind of foul? Just so. Last dash for Will Clark. Line. That was incredible from both men, but Michael Sillis. That was impressive. Sillis the silent assassin. <laughs> he was slower at the start, but not only caught up, but Kept made that some... pace the entire way through then. I think this is important. A lot of these lads seem to be setting off real fast and burning out real fast. <laughs> It could be that if you aren't that confident in your grip, that's what you need to do though. Get those lengths in quick, get them done before your grip fails, because I've said it a few times already, once your grip goes, that's kind of it. Yeah. What are we doing, Josh? Eight meters? Is that what you need to win? Josh has declared, Josh Lancaster has declared 81 meters. I think the best is, what's the best now? Uh, we are just going to try and... I thought it was 70, yeah. We're, we're thinking 70 odd meters is the best so far. Come on then, 80. So yeah, Josh is... 81. Josh is going 11 first. meters beyond. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what, I wouldn't, I wouldn't bet against him. I wouldn't bet against him. He's... A quid. I'll bet you an egg. Josh Lancaster is an athlete that has many tricks in his bag of tricks. <laughs> I think he's done so many competitions and tried so many different things. Some things work, some things don't. Yeah, but he knows. And, error. and we're off. Okay, Smith out the gates first. But we saw it in the last heat. That doesn't necessarily matter. Give me a case Solid of from Josh. 
Yeah, shot. Both men are quick on the runs. And they're, well. they're setting themselves perfectly. Neck and neck so far. Are we going to see this 80 meters? Because if we see it from Josh at this, at this pace, we we're halfway through now. We see it from both it. men. But Josh just pulling ahead. Just pulling ahead. Connor Smith isn't going to want to let Josh. Connor isn't going to want to let Josh run away with this. But Josh almost seems sort of in the zone. Like barely aware of what Connor is doing. I would say that Josh doesn't look as though he's being tested too much. I'll die. <laughs> we will wait. A2 on, let's go. <laughs> we believe that Josh Lancaster made good on his promise. Oh, I need a leg now. <laughs> Damn it. Which would put him so, firmly in the lead. Yeah, 81 to be, and we have Dan Benson and Ollie so that's, that's a big target to beat, and these two men. This is going to be exciting. This, I, I, I'm struggling for words because this one is going to be exciting. I know. This one is going to be exciting. <laughs> Just getting the final measurements done. Before this grand finale. Yeah, this is the final heat. These are two athletes. Thank you. That were matching each other event for event at the European Championships last year. Last year they tied for points on first place, but Ollie Clark lost out due to count back. A brutal way to be awarded second place. Yeah. So are they going to chase Josh? Or are they going to race each other? I would say, I mean, personally, if it was me, I'd be racing each other. I wouldn't be aiming for it. I'd be pacing myself to the competitor that's going to be at the top of me, so. Uh, we've actually got confirmation that Josh Lancaster got 81.4 metres. 40 centimetres further than it. Here we go. Lightning from Dan Benson. We already heard earlier that Dan Benson's grip is phenomenal. He doesn't seem to have any qualms with his new bicep either. Oh, he's trying to keep up with Dan Benson. His coach is shouting, don't get ahead of yourself. I feel like both of these lads are going to try for that 81.4. I think they are going to try for the 80 meters. Dan Benson seems to be slowing down ever so slightly. Yeah, I agree. I take that back. Speeding up again. But then on the right, moving so fast with the farmer's pickup with a slightly slower than Dan. Yeah, I, I, I would say it's starting to hit Dan Benson now. Six Ollie, now. Ollie Clark's still moving well, but he's huffing, he's huffing. How much has he got left? Uh, Dan Benson coming back towards us. I think. This is for the 80 meters, I think, for Dan Benson. So all he needs to do is turn around. Can he get another leg in? He can get another. He's done what he needed to do, and no more. Ollie Clark is a heat. Wow. Very, very close. Dan Benson is not messing about today, is he? Dan wants this. He wants this win, and he's going to do everything he can to get it, he? <laughs> he has put himself in an incredibly strong position going into that final event. Massively. Wow, what an event.
That was exciting. What an event. I think you called it as well. I think you said we'd get 80 meters. Yeah, 80 meters for the win. Wow. Really exciting. So we've got a little short break for now before we get ready for our final event. Okay, yeah, we, we've got Sam a short Mago break. Vio. Going into the final event. Sam Mago Vio. Leave, leave. Are your predictions? Remaining the same as they are, as they were earlier in the in the chat. Let us know. Let us know how you're enjoying the day. I mean, wow. I mean, we're seeing Ollie Clark is absolutely fried after that. But yeah, let's cut to a quick commercial break. We will be back with a sandbag over yoke for reps. Wow. strongest athletes in Europe are coming to Leeds to win Europe's Strongest Man. This is my path, this is my job. So Tremendous battle! I've done it before so many times, I know I'm capable. The Highland Hope! Oh! With ease from Scotland! Yes, Novikov! Alexei Novikov! the world record, ladies and gentlemen, Cody Acker! Wow! Look at this! From the back from Ukraine! So close! Edging the sword on Novikov with the fifth on their quickest! Koryaka with an enormous strike! Gets the fifth stone! And he may be the new man tonight! I'm Rihanna Lovelace and this is the Chaos Competition Kit. Consists of the Chaos Grip Top, the Heavy Duty Underbelt, the neoprene shorts, and to turn it all off, we have the 30 mil chaos lever belt. Join me today, we'll take on a 420 yoke and we'll see how this kit holds up. My name is Rihanna Lovelace. I first broke the deadlift world record in 2017. Since then, we've put over 100 kilos on it and used the exact same prep every single time. For the first time ever, this prep is now available to you guys. It includes a full 12 week peaking program, all your accessories with an RPE and a percentage scale. It's easy to transfer to your own training. On top of this, it includes my full velocity charts keeping yourself on track. And as well as this, it adds a full document that goes through all the accessories, the hows, the whys, the whens, and then other pro tips on how to balance things like nervous system, 
how to make sure that you keep that peak exactly on point. And this is available exclusively from Chaos Strength. $49.95, you get access to the full thing. Take your deadlift to the next level with Lovelace Peaking Program. the strongest athletes in Europe are coming to Leeds to win Europe's strongest man. This is my path, this is my job. So Tremendous battle! I've done it before so many times, I know I'm capable. The Highland Hulk! Oh! With ease from Scotland! Yes, Novikov! Alexei Novikov! For the world record, ladies and gentlemen, Koryaka! Wow! Look at this! From the back from Ukraine! So close, edging the zone on Novikov with the fifth on there quickest. Koryaka with an enormous strike gets the fifth stone and he may be the new man tonight. I'm Rihanna Lovelace and this is the Chaos Competition Kit. Consists of the Chaos Grip Top, the Heavy Duty Underbelt, the neoprene shorts, and to tie it all off, we have the 30 mil chaos lever belt. Join me today, we'll take on a 420 yoke and we'll see how this kit holds up. My name is Rihanna Lovelace. I first broke the deadlift world record in 2017. Since then, we've put over 100 kilos on it and used the exact same prep every single time. For the first time ever, this prep is now available to you guys. It includes a full 12 week peaking program, all your accessories with an RPE and a percentage scale. It's easy to transfer to your own training. On top of this, it includes my full velocity charts keeping yourself on track. And as well as this, it adds a full document that goes through all the accessories, the hows, the whys, the whens, and then other pro tips on how to balance things like nervous system, how to make sure that you keep that peak exactly on point. And this is available exclusively from Chaos Strength. $49.95, you get access to the full thing. Take your deadlift to the next level with Lovelace Peaking Program.
12 of the strongest athletes in Europe are coming to Leeds to win Europe's strongest man. This is my path, this is my job. So Tremendous battle! I've done it before so many times, I know I'm capable. The Highland Hope! Oh! With ease from Scotland! Yes, Novikov! Alexei Novikov! the world record, ladies and gentlemen, Koryaka! Whoa! Look at this! From the back from Ukraine! So close! Edging the sword on Novikov with the fifth on their quickest. Koryaka with an enormous strike gets the fifth stone and he may be the new man tonight. I'm Rihanna Lovelace and this is the Chaos Competition Kit. It consists of the Chaos Grip Top, the Heavy Duty Underbelt, the neoprene shorts, and to turn it all off, we have the 30 mil chaos lever belt. Join me today, we'll take on a 420 yoke and we'll see how this kit holds up. My name is Rihanna Lovelace. I first broke the deadlift world record in 2017. Since then, we've put over 100 kilos on it and used the exact same prep every single time. For the first time ever, this prep is now available to you guys. It includes a full 12 week peaking program, all your accessories with an RPE and a percentage scale. It's easy to transfer to your own training. On top of this, it includes my full velocity charts keeping yourself on track. And as well as this, it adds a full document that goes through all the accessories, the hows, the whys, the whens, and then other pro tips on how to balance things like nervous system, how to make sure that you keep that peak exactly on point. And this is available exclusively from Chaos Strength. 49.95, you get access to the full thing. Take your deadlift to the next level with Lovelace Peaking Program. the strongest athletes in Europe are coming to Leeds to win Europe's strongest man. 
This is my path. This is my job. So Tremendous battle! I've done it before so many times. I know I'm capable. The Highland of Oh, it is from Stoke. Yes, Novikov! Alexei Novikov! The world record, ladies and gentlemen, Koryaka! Whoa! Look at this! From the bottom from Ukraine! So close! Edging the zone on Novikov with the fifth on their quickest. Koryaka with an enormous strike gets the fifth stone and he may be the new man tonight. I'm Rihanna Lovelace and this is the Chaos Competition Kit. Consists of the Chaos Grip Top, the Heavy Duty Underbelt, the Neoprene Shorts, and to turn it all off, we have the 30 mil Chaos Lever Belt. Join me today, we'll take on a 420 yoke and we'll see how this kit holds up. My name is Rihanna Lovelace. I first broke the deadlift world record in 2017. Since then, we've put over 100 kilos on it and used the exact same prep every single time. For the first time ever, this prep is now available to you guys. It includes a full 12 week peaking program, all your accessories with an RPE and a percentage scale. It's easy to transfer to your own training. On top of this, it includes my full velocity charts keeping yourself on track. And as well as this, it adds a full document that goes through all the accessories, the hows, the whys, the whens, and then other pro tips on how to balance things like nervous system, how to make sure that you keep that peak exactly on point. And this is available exclusively from Chaos Strength. $49.95, you get access to the full thing. Take your deadlift to the next level with Lovelace Peaking Program.
strongest athletes in Europe are coming to Leeds to win Europe's strongest man. This is my path, this is my job. So Tremendous battle! I've done it before so many times, I know I'm capable. The Highland of oh, With ease from Yes, Novikov! Alexei Novikov! the world record, ladies and gentlemen, Koryaka! Wow! Look at this! From the map from Ukraine! So close! Edging the sword on Novikov with the fifth on there quickest. Koryaka with an enormous strike gets the fifth stone and he may be the new man tonight. And there we have it, your standings going into the final event, the sandbag over yoke for reps. The top six names will qualify for Britain's strongest man under 90 kilograms. So even if the athletes aren't in with a shot at the podium, it's still all to play for on this final event. Yeah. Yeah, so the scores on screen at the moment, I think, are basing off of the last event. But if you look at the total points, that is the order that we will be going in for the final event. So in first place currently we have Dan Benson with 96 points. In second place we have Ollie Clark with 93.5. Third place Josh Lancaster with 86. In joint fourth we have Connor Smith and Jake Allen with 77. And in joint fifth we have Mark Cummins and Michael Sillis with 74 points. So a couple of ties there which will make it very interesting going into this final event. Well we did see last week at uh, England's strongest under 80 kilogram there was a tie uh, I think it was for 8th, 7th or 8th place yeah, it was, and wasn't it? both athletes got invited to Britain's Strongest Man off the back of the performance on the day so officially speaking the top 6 will go through but some discretionary places could be awarded depending on scores and, and overall performance on the day. Yeah, as it stands at the moment, obviously there's the top seven really, isn't there? So it'll be interesting to see what's happening here. As then we drop into our eighth place with Matt Diamond at 63.5. So there's a bit of a jump in between that sort of seventh and eighth place there. So all to play for though. I think a lot of the lads We've had a little wander around and look at them, and some lads are looking a bit ropey. <laughs> yep, that, that farm is for max distance, and that really took it out of a lot of the guys. Mm, I think it's finished some people off, hasn't it? But the vibes are still good. Everyone seems a little bit tired, but... <laughs> well, uh, it's, it's worth noting, actually, that the competition started at 10 a.m., yeah. and we are only just beyond 1 p.m. Yeah. And we've had an Axel British a British Axel record set as well. So. Yeah, it's been super fast. I know a couple of lads that I spoke to have said like they've really struggled with the pace of the comp. So it it's worth noting, but I like that. It's like I like a fast paced comp. Yeah. So I, and I think if you if you've not trained to be ready for a fast paced comp then this will be a shock to the system. <laughs> Yeah, so going into this, this is an event with weight options. So there are three bags available for the athletes to load, all nominated before the event. So once you're, you're locked in, that's it, no going back. There's 100 kilograms. We do have a couple of athletes coming out to do 100 kilograms, 120 kilograms, but the vast majority, understandably probably, have gone for the heavier 140 kilogram bag. And for the podium, it's going to be interesting i mean we've seen dan benson will do exactly what he needs to do and no more yeah so we'll, we'll probably be, see the same here ollie clark was looking broken after that mm. farmer's carry how is he going to be feeling going into this 140 kilogram bag loads josh lancaster love sandbags yeah well there's always i mean i think the points ollie's probably a little bit further ahead on points now so it's unlikely that i think josh is going to get that second place but saying that i mean if ollie fails that 140 bag then 
there's always a chance, there's always a chance, and I think Josh will know this, so it's really all to play for still. I feel like Ollie wouldn't have gone for 140 if he and his coach and everyone around him wasn't confident he'd do it. Because mm. if there was a worry, wouldn't it be better to sort of damage control with 120? Well, while I do agree, if you, if you look at the choices that have been made, even if you got one or two or you were the winner of the 120 bag, you have the possibility of losing if everybody else gets that 140 bag. So at this point now, I think it's all to play for for aiming for those top bags because the Scott, we're looking at who's picked what in front of us and nearly three quarters of the field have picked that 140 bag. So you're only going to get maybe maximum eight, nine points if you do max reps with that 120 bag. So while I agree with you, if they have made that decision and it might have been a bit shifty for the 140, they maybe wouldn't have made that decision, but I don't really think he's got a choice at this point. That's fair, that's fair. And um, yeah, we've, we've got athletes doing the 100 kilogram bag. We've got athletes doing the 120 kilogram bag. There are quite a few athletes here that it is their first time competing at this national level in such a big, high profile competition. So there are people that are out here just sort of aiming aiming to test themselves yeah. and, and just gain some experience in a, in a high level competition like this. Yeah, which I think is really cool. Like I love the fact that people are pushing themselves out of their comfort zone to do these sort of high level events. It's it's really cool and it's it's really hard when you come into an event and you know you're gonna zero or you know it's not gonna be like up to podium for you, but just going out there and trying is a proper stand-up thing to do, so fair play to you. Yeah, and as we were saying all throughout the competition last week, if, if you're watching this and, and are not involved in the sport and have been thinking about giving the sport a go, do. There are competitions for all weight classes and ability levels all across the country throughout the year. Uh, you can go to Strength Register and find a database of almost all the competitions. Yeah. Um, gyms are everywhere with the equipment that you can train with. And the atmosphere at one of these competitions is incredible. Um, never, I have never experienced anything like it as an athlete. And, uh, yeah, from my first competition five years ago, I just immediately fell in love. Yeah. So we are getting ready with Nathaniel Banks. He's out on his own, 100 kilograms. Way up to the lap, that was a nice, easy pick. That's it. So this is this is gonna be for pride more than anything else. Yeah. Always good to try and max out these events. So if you've come to the competition, you might as well max it out. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, and yeah lovely. as I've said before, Nathaniel usually at home in the under 80 kilogram class, so really stepping up to the heavier weight class, heavier weights. Nice, nice rhythm. 15 seconds to go. Yeah, come on. Nice. I think that was the first one that actually rested on the bar. Five seconds, he's thinking about it. Oh, no. <laughs> that is one of the things with sandbags. When you hear there are five seconds left, Not much are you really going to get a rep in five seconds? No. I think, and this is something I got from Josh, because uh, I was, I was a, a client of Josh's for a, for a year or so. And there was a competition I did, it was an overhead medley, it was a dumbbell, then a log, then a keg, and, and the dumbbell, I'd never pressed, had absolutely no hope, but the log, I could have had a go at. Yeah. So Josh told me he was also competing, and that was a competition he did two weight classes as well. <laughs> uh, he told me to just go to the log, just try the log. Mm -hmm. And... Also, if you're, if you're doing an event like this and like you're in Nathaniel's position and you did have five seconds left, 
I probably would have just gone for another rest. <laughs> yeah, just that. I mean, why not? Well. Why not? Ooh, okay. So we have We've got Gwen Fulton. Jamie Gemmell on the 120 kilogram bag. Jamie Gemmell on the 120 bag. Wayne's wearing the gloves. Would you wear gloves? No. No? Bitch wins, aren't they? <laughs> Josh Lancaster likes a glove? <laughs> no, no, they've tried to convince me, but yeah. I, in my head, it, it, I have a very similar feeling to gloves as I do to stone sleeves. It's another thing that can potentially go wrong and put you off. So if you don't really need them, don't use them. Big rep there from Jamie Gemmell, just in time. Lovely. Already up to both bags on 120. Just heard Jamie Gemmell say that's what he wanted. That's, that's good to hear, it's good yeah. to hear. Coming into these competitions, you set targets for yourself, because there are only a few athletes that could realistically challenge the likes of Ollie and Dan. Yeah, and you'd have to be super, super confident that you knew that you could challenge them. So you'd come in with targets for yourself, and as long as you meet or exceed those targets, it's a good competition. Yeah, exactly. All money in the bank, as hope Christy would say. Absolutely. Alright, so David Evans and Rob Nixon both on the 120 bag. Oh, nice pick up from Rob there. Yeah, very strong from Rob. All that pirate strength building up. <laughs> David looks absolutely Knackers. exhausted, yeah. <laughs> we are seeing those athletes digging deep, giving it their all. Rolling it onto the lap, David wow. Evans. And it's over. A little bit of a jog there for Rob Nixon. Only halfway through this event. I bet there's 60 seconds of dragging for these lads. Come on, David. Big pick. Let's go. Oh, rolling it up. Oh, that looks hard. And now both men are wearing knee sleeves. I personally, I'm not much of a fan of knee sleeves on this event because it's something that the bag can get caught on. Or it's certainly, certainly I've had that before, where I've gone to lift a heavy bag and I haven't been able to get the bag past the knee sleeves. So I'm a big believer in all moving events now. I won't wear knee sleeves at all, because I feel like they really slow me down. But I guess for this, it's not really a moving event, but definitely something to consider. All right, these are the last two athletes that will be handling the 120 kilogram bag. We have Jack Bushanan and Sam Watson. Are we both still on 120? Or have we moved up? Uh, it looks like potentially. I think someone's changed. Potentially Sam Watson might Lou? have gone up to 140. Oh, it looks, yeah, definitely. I think Sam Watson must have gone to the 140. That sandbag is... Here we go, yeah. Whoa, yep. he has confirmed. Got it confirmed. He knows there's big points this on the it. board for this, so... One pick up. Come on, Sam. Solid. On Solid from Jack. Oh, this is going to be big for Sam. He just needs to get it above his knees. Yeah, if he can get it on the lap. Even just get a knee underneath it. Oh, there was Sam. That's a close together. That's a bit scary. Oh, Sam. Oh, no. It is really an all or nothing sort of event this now. Yep. Yep. Sam needs this rap. He wants it. Where is Jack Buchanan? Is nailing him, throwing that bag over. Easy. He, he probably could have gone for the one for like Oh! Oh! Sam Watson! It's nearly on the lap! Come on, it's nearly on the lap! It's on the knees! What's he going to do with it? 
can he get it up? He's not in. He thinks he can. Yes, come on, Sam. You can do this. Stand up with it. You can do this. Come on, he's in the hip. Oh! Sam Watson! Oh, oh. oh just catch his chips a little bit early. Oh. I, I wonder if he would have stood more of a chance if those first two attempts. Yeah. If, if he'd have got it on, onto his knees on that first attempt. Yeah, I think but so. But wow. Yeah, that was... Hats off to Sam Watson. Oh, I feel like he should have gotten... Just give him half a point. Yeah. Come on. Shan if you do. Perry White, Steve Stevenson. Perry White and Double Steve. Let's go. Final event of the day for these two gentlemen. Steve is absolutely one of the tallest athletes competing today, so you have to fancy his chances if he just stands up with it. He doesn't yeah, he doesn't he need much triple extension. That, that height, isn't it? A nice pick up on that sandbag will be enough. Straight up, look at that! Oh, what a statement from Steve Stevenson! And Harry White not far behind. Sit. And again, good clearance on that as well. Like he's knocking it over with a good inch or two clearance. Perry White just jostling that bag into position. Again, oh, needing to roll up the knee. But Steve Stevenson, what a performance! Those long arms coming in years yeah. there, getting right over the top of that bag. Oh, it's on the bar. Can he get it over? Yes, nudges it over. And another from Perry White. That was a battle and a half. Wow, I think this is going to be hard reps to beat. What's uh, yeah. Oh. And there's the whistle. Four reps for double steam. That is some effort, ah. Wow. All right, we've got Graham Williams and, and Luke Shirley. My new favourite, Luke Shirley. Let's go. <laughs> well, Graham Williams was actually supposed to compete in the under 80 kilogram competition last week. Failed to make weight. Oh. Uh, he did tell me he sort of feels a bit more at home in the under 90s anyway, because I think he was trying to shift quite a lot. Yeah. To make that cut. I mean, you can see from the frame of the guy. Yeah, he's surely not got that much to lose. Okay, so here we go. Come on then, lads, let's go. Ooh, have we got a pick for Graham? Graham, it's on his knees. Oh, he's got it on his knees. Luke Shirley, a little unstick. Oh, a bit of a cramp for Luke Shirley. Come on, Graham, let's go. Stand up with it, Graham. There it is, it's over. Luke really struggling. He's not going to give up though. He's got people in the wing shouting him on. Graham has called it. That was close. That was almost there. 15 seconds. He's going to have to do it now if he wants to. He's going to have to. He's lost the hat. Ah, oh, no. Such a shame. Such a shame for Luke Shirley. Not the way he would have wanted to finish today. Frank Parks. Frank Parks back again to show us how to do some sandbags. Eh? Well, he seems to have recovered from the farmers. He was limping away from that event, going for a vertical pick. Oh my god. Well, he is tall though. He's got, he is. He's got tallness he on his side, so it might be a, a good idea for him because the low should be to that. Real Clark, straight up. Straight up. Frank yes. Clark! Well done. Good work from both men. Very different techniques, but very effective. Will Clark able to pop it up and over? Frank Parks! Wow, that was much that better. Was, yeah, that was... Found his groove now. 
Well, we are seeing some excellent performances so far. And we've got quite a few athletes to go. Yeah. Frank Parks just missed that pickup. Just struggling with that pickup now. Sandbag sitting a little bit low. Is he going to be able to? Yeah. That's one of the dangers of the vertical pick. Yeah. Now in an awkward position under the bar for us yep. too. But Will Clark nudging that yes. one 140 kilogram bag over. And that's it. <laughs> Rich Molnar. Simon Walsh. Be aware, watch out for that belt bling. <laughs> At least he hasn't got a t-shirt on this time, so yeah. that's not getting plumb. He's got his he's got a sleeve around the belt to create a bit more of a shelf for that bag to sit on. Tops off as well. Can't help himself, can he? <laughs> Simon struggling with that pick up. And Rich gets the first rep over. Simon Walsh feeling that cram. That farmer's for distance has got a lot to answer for. So Rich Molnar currently going it alone. So Rich Molnar wearing just the one knee sleeve because he actually suffered a horrendous knee injury a couple of years ago at Britain's Strongest Man on a Max Stone Road. Easy pick. That's it. Managed it even though he had to take a couple of steps in towards the bar. Ten seconds to go. He's calling it there. So now we're getting into the interesting bits. Are these lads going to do enough to keep themselves in these qualifying spots? I think Matt was just out of the qualifying spots as it stands. Let's see if we get another sleeper performance from Michael Sillis. Mm, steady, deliberate. <laughs> Not seeing many grip tops yet. No, yeah, interesting choice. Straight up from Michael and Matt. Michael, Matt wanted to get rid of that bag. Michael is Where's making it? sure he stays in this qualifying spot, isn't he? He's not messing around. And Michael Sillis is just dropping the bag over the bar, but keeping it quite close, yeah. so that he doesn't have to walk the bar, uh, walk the bag forwards to get it over the bar. Smart move, just like Matt Diamond had to. His bag was a little too far away, so he had to take a couple of steps forwards. And another throw! Oh, God! Oh, Michael Sillis carrying on. I, I hope we don't see much more of this crap. But Michael Sillis plowing on. Yes, come on! Oh, <laughs> All right, we have got three heats left. Oh, this is all to play for. What's our top score so far? Five reps, I think we've got to beat. Just double five checking reps it, to five me. reps. Are we going to see many more lads get more than five? I think that'll be a hard score to beat, to be honest, because Michael Sillis did not let up once during that whole performance, did he? No. No, he did exactly what he did on the farmers, just kept going, kept going. Yeah, really and impressive. Set a very good target. So Jake Allen, Mark, the Honey Badger Cummins. 
He was the only athlete to complete the sandbag to shoulder ladder last wow. year. Easy at England's strongest man He's under 90 kilograms. This is messing that. Oh, Jake just oh, tripping ahead. Jake ahead. But Mark. Jake is creeping ever so slightly ahead. Each pickup of that bag is textbook. Mark Cummings starting to struggle. It's in the lap. He'll be able to get it over. Jake oh Allen, God. though. Come on. Jake Allen is still able to run around Jake the bar. Is just nailing this. That's incredible. Look at that pick. That's the first rep he's had to sort of roll on. The strength in those hips. Yeah, Mark wants this. Good stuff. And Jake Allen. And we've had the whistle. Wow. I think that's got to be Jake Allen, our new leader. Right. Seven reps for Jake Allen there. Seven reps. That's that is going to take some beat in that, I feel like. Very impressive. Very impressive. And I would imagine that keeps him firmly in contention for qualifying for Britain's oh, strongest man. I would have said so. He's definitely got that qualifier. So we've got Connor Smith and Josh Lancaster. Josh taking a hit of that ammonia. Wearing the lifting gloves. And the most interesting leggings I've ever seen. Primark specials, apparently. Oh, oh, good pick from both men. Josh is first to get a rep. That's looking quite maximal, though, for these lads. I'm not going to lie. Well, again, this is Josh Lancaster's sixth event of the day. Yeah. We're getting there, though. I think we need, we need a minimum of four yeah. reps to stay in this game now. Both men moving slow. Yeah. Absolutely exhausted. Oh, that hit was looking better there from both of them. It was that hit of ammonia that Josh took. Connor is keeping up. Josh is looking for one more. They're both looking for one more. Yeah, Who's yeah, going to get it first? Oh, Connor. Connor. Oh, Ten seconds and Josh is going to do it. Get it over. Yes. There it is. Josh has got it. Hey, Connor, I think he's done. Josh. Oh, just the whistle beats Josh. Solid performance there. For the first time today, he looks absolutely exhausted. Yeah. <laughs> Finally tired him out after six events. So here we go. Oh, I don't think he's too happy about that, but Ollie Clark and Dan Benson currently occupying the top two spots on the podium. We know that seven reps is the current leader. I think a lot of these lads now they'll be aware that that will have split the points nicely as Jake would not was sat in And they're off. Oh. Who's first? Dan Benson just first. But oh, Ollie, Ollie Clark. Ollie Clark is racing, but they both got to the back at the same time. Was Ollie just wasting energy a little bit? But he claws it back! Ollie Clark is ever so slightly in front now. But then, is Dan? He thinks he might be able to get this and win this. But is Dan Benson just trying to keep up? Seeing some pain in Dan's face on that rep, though, that pickup, that took something out of Dan Benson. But Ollie Clark is still going strong. Who's going to get this? Who wants it more? Only wants it! But Dan Benson gets over! Dan Benson takes the lead! Ollie is struggling! Is he going to get it over? Dan Benson waiting! The whistle goes! What a dramatic finish to this event! Wow! Dan Benson doing 
exactly what he needed to do. He's smiling, he's happy, he knows. He knows, he knows. Ollie just got his. Uh, wow, Ollie a fantastic truly performance there, but just gave, not quite there. Gave absolutely everything on that. Yeah, absolutely. I think both lads did. I, yeah. All of the lads there absolutely maxed that out. That was a hard final event for these boys. So tough. But I think while we wait for the official scores to be counted up and confirmed, I, I think we can safely assume who is taking the win and who is second place. Yeah. Definitely. Wow, what a competition! Wild from start to finish. I hope you guys enjoyed watching it. We're gonna top up the scores. Then there will be the athlete presentation. Um, let us know in the chat what were your favourite performances from today. I mean, <laughs> there are so many to choose from. Ollie, so Ollie Clark, many. Sandbag, Toss Run. Dan Benson's deadlifts. Dan Benson's farmers. Farmers, yeah. Yeah. Incredible day. Incredible day. Okay, so we are going to cut to an ad break. We will be back with you with the scores and the award presentation. <laughs> strongest athletes in Europe are coming to Leeds to win Europe's Strongest Man. This is my path, this is my job. So Tremendous battle! I've done it before so many times, I know I'm capable. The Highland Hulk! Oh! With ease from Stockholm! Yes, Alexei Novikov! the world record, ladies and gentlemen, Koryaka! Whoa! Look at this! From the back from Ukraine! So close! Edging the sword on Novikov with the fifth on their quickest! Koryaka with an enormous strike! Gets the fifth stone! And he may be the new man tonight! I'm Rihanna Lovelace and this is the Chaos Competition Kit. Consists of the Chaos Grip Top, the Heavy Duty Underbelt, the neoprene shorts, and to turn it all off, we have the 13mm Chaos Lever Belt. Join me today, we'll take on a 420 yoke, and we'll see how this kit holds up.
My name is Rihanna Lovelace. I first broke the deli floor record in 2017. Since then, we've put over 100 kilos on it and used the exact same prep every single time. For the first time ever, this prep is now available to you guys. It includes a full 12 week peaking program, all your accessories with an RPE and a percentage scale. It's easy to transfer to your own training. On top of this, it includes my full velocity charts, keeping yourself on track. And as well as this, it adds a full document that goes through all the accessories, the hows, the whys, the whens, and then other pro tips on how to balance things like nervous system, how to make sure that you keep that peak exactly on point. And this is available exclusively from Chaos Strength. $49.95, you get access to the full thing. Take your deadlift to the next level with Lovelace Peaking Program. strongest athletes in Europe are coming to Leeds to win Europe's strongest man. This is my path, this is my job. So Tremendous battle! I've done it before so many times, I know I'm capable. The Highland of oh, oh, with ease from Stoke. Yes, Novikov! Alexei Novikov! the world record, ladies and gentlemen, Koryaka! Whoa! Look at this! From the back from Ukraine! Dokos edging the start on Novikov with the fifth on their quickest. Koryaka with an enormous strike gets the fifth stone and he may be the new man tonight. I'm Rihanna Lovelace and this is the Chaos Competition Kit. Consists of the Chaos Grip Top, the Heavy Duty Underbelt, the Neoprene Shorts, and to turn it all off, we have the 30 mil Chaos Lever Belt. Join me today, we'll take on a 420 yoke and we'll see how this kit holds up. My name is Rihanna Lovelace. I first broke the deadlift floor record in 2017. Since then, we've put over 100 kilos on it and used the exact same prep every single time. For the first time ever, this prep is now available to you guys. It includes a full 12 week peaking program, all your accessories with an RPE and a percentage scale. It's easy to transfer to your own training. On top of this, it includes my full velocity charts 
keeping yourself on track. And as well as this, it adds a full document that goes through all the accessories, the hows, the whys, the whens, and then other pro tips on how to balance things like nervous system, how to make sure that you keep that peak exactly on point. And this is available exclusively from Chaos Strength. $49.95, you get access to the full thing. Take your deadlift to the next level with Lovelace Peaking Program. And we are back. There are your final standings for England's strongest man under 90 kilograms 2024. We have heard that the top seven are going to be extended invitations to Britain's strongest man. So there you have it there. Connor Smith with 93.5 points. Michael Sillis, 96.5 points. Mark Cummins, also with 96.5 points. Jake Allen with 102 points. And then we get to your podium. Josh Lancaster did enough to keep a place on the podium, 105.5 points. Your second place, Ollie Clark, 113 points. And England's strongest man, Dan Benson. What a comeback. What a comeback to competition from Dan Benson. What a comeback. I mean, he's, not that he's been untouchable, but he has been untouchable, hasn't he? <laughs> Pretty much all day. Yeah. Dan Benson has schooled everybody, I feel like. You, you'd never know that he was out of action for months with a torn bicep. Absolutely not, no. And it's, it's just really cool to see that he's had that injury. And it's not been a stopping point at all. Like, if anything, he's come back better. So super inspiring to see and just really cool. He's had a great day and it's been awesome to watch his battle with Ollie. And it's been awesome to watch the whole thing to be honest. Every lad has put 110% out on that floor today and really nailed it. So hats Absolutely. off to you all. Absolutely. And Chaos Live will be back again next week for the final England's Strongest Man of the Weight Classes. It's the under 105s. You will be able to watch for free via the Chaos Strength Gym YouTube channel starting at 9.45 a.m. on Sunday the 7th of April. I feel like almost now we're all friends now, aren't we, on this live stream? Two Sundays together. It's been great. We should just keep this up every Sunday. <laughs> Getting a very, very big head shake there <laughs> from Alex. No, thank you. Not the stress. <laughs> yeah, the technical team have really pulled out the stops this week. There were some technical issues that we had last week, but I think it's fair to say they were ironed out for this week, so hats off to them. Yeah, massive hats off to the whole Chaos team. I mean, the loaders and everything, everyone has worked really hard today to get this conference moving. Like we said before, like it has blown by. These lads have been pushed to their limit. They have not had chances in between these events to cool down or have a break or anything like that. So Just getting the podium set.
for the presentations. Cool trophies these are. I was going to say, they are some nice looking trophies. Very cool trophies. And thanks again to everybody that's tuned into the live stream. These first two live streams on the Chaos Live, they've been a joy to take part in and hopefully they've been enjoyable to watch. I mean, the, ac well, <laughs> the action speaks for itself. You know, it, there is exciting things happening in the weight classes in Strong Man and Strong Woman. And it's, it's things like this. It, it's people like you tuning into the live streams that are gonna keep it going and keep it growing and yeah this is this is just the start really I think yeah I know Chaos Live have got some big ambitions and big plans for the lightweights and the weight classes and it's it's great to be a part of it. and you could be a part of it too as an athlete get Hell signed yeah. up Get signed up. I know Chaos makes sure that these competitions happen around about the same time every year, so you know you've got 12 months or so to get some training in. You know you're going to have to deadlift something. You know you're going to have to press something. Yep. You know you're going to have to carry something, so start training. Start training, show up, and compete against the best. I mean, a lot of the guys here were speaking to Jamie Gemmel earlier. He got four personal bests out of five events. And he was competing against the two best in Europe. Yeah. find out who is qualified for Britain's strongest man. So we originally said top six, but having a look at the scores, having a look at the exceptional performances today, decided to take through top seven through to Britain's strongest man. We will be awarding yeah. all the boys that have qualified, but if everybody can stick around, we'll get big athletes through for them at the end. Just before we get cracking, I'd like to thank everybody for the support. This is a brand new official strongman pathway for the weight categories. For the first time in the sport, we are now seeing a clear, fair, high potential pathway for every class in the sport. So, a massive thank you for supporting us. Cheers, guys. <laughs> Athletes, if you do want to see your official points, it's on Strength and Looks. I'm going to look some live things that will be posting the points of Instagram in the next couple of days. But let's get on with the shiny stuff. So the first man through finished in seventh place overall. Congratulations, Thomas Smith. Yeah! Yeah! In second place, our runner-up, this guy just gets better and better every time. Congratulations, Ollie Clark! <laughs> we 
which means the champion taking the title of England Strongest Man 2024. Give it up for Dan Benson!